live. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I am Juan Carlos, uh, and welcome to Open for Adventure. I was uh, in the middle of something else when I realized that we're on. It's okay. We're doing it live. Um, anyways, I brought a different set of Sunday friends with me today, and uh, look at me. I'm the dungeon master today, okay? Um, so why don't we uh, do small little introductions because normally we play Sunday friends and I'm sorry we won't have any more bath house episodes today but we got something else in store for you um, and uh, because today uh, if you donate anything I don't know where that sentence is going but I'll end it where I need it to end which is if you donate today half the proceeds will go to the Trevor Project and the other half goes to the Black Lives Matter uh, charity so um, if you're feeling generous, which I know you are, um, it's going to be for a good cause. Um, anyways, that's enough about me for right now. Why don't we go to who's uh, who's up here? That's going to be Eris. Hi, I'm Eris Savan. Um, I'm usually here about this time every week. Uh, so you know me. You, you know me. It's fine. Um, today I'm playing Tamron. Who I'll just say she's a uh, she's a halfling wizard. She's fun. We'll get to that. Uh, next, we will do on my other side, which uh, Rot. That's Stacy. Hello, my name is Rot. I mean, my name name is Stacy, but I'm playing Rot today. She is a goblin rogue, and. It's going to be fun, too. All righty. Let's go to the other corner. Mr. Maroki, uh, played by Luke. Hello, everyone. Today, I will be, be, I will be, I will be playing <laughs> Maroki, a turtle monk. Um, and uh, yeah, this is my first time on stream, but I will be also joining for the Elder Scrolls campaign coming up soon. So I'm happy to be here for a great cause. For a great cause. For a great cloud um <laughs> and speaking of uh, first time on stream loma no one's here i'm joking hi hello my name's luma and i've been a part of this lovely group of people for what what a year? no half a year now or so i've been doing offline stuff mostly and just every single time I get to play, I'm just like, ah, I get to be myself in all different facets of it. I get to play one of the characters with these people. So now finally you guys get to see this face. And I hope that it matters. And I hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that, I mean, I don't have to hope. I know we're going to have a fun time today. So, excited! Yay! Yay! Alrighty. So uh unless anybody has anything else to say we can just jump right into it um okay so um the setting is a homebrew world of mine back in the day i used to run a podcast called paradise um that no longer exists so we will play a one shot within that homebrew world which we'll call uh paradise yes because the episode is called trouble in paradise um in this homebrew world um, it's set hundred of years in the future of the United States, of the world that we live in now. Modern society, as we know, we all know it, disappeared all at once. And by modern society, I just meant humans, just gone, donezo, all right? Forget about them. Um, as a matter of fact, people just call them the ancients. Now, humans still exist, but they're not as prominent as they, they are now, obviously. I mean, we're all just humans. There's no minotaurs around, not that I've seen. Um, in any case, no one knows why or how they disappeared. Uh, the one thing that we do know is that they were just humans and uh, that's it. <laughs> They're gone. Done so. Uh, now, we have a group of three artificers. Artificers in this world are basically scavengers looking around for powerful artifacts to sell for money. The better you are at artificing, the more famous you are. So basically, we got a couple of celebrities because we're at level 10 here. Um, so, um, the setting is Florida. You all are in the Everglades of Florida. All right. Um, so why don't I go ahead and just, uh, why don't I just let the, uh, the group, the trio, the, the fancy three, 
I don't know if that's the name you chose for yourselves, but feel free to keep that one. Um, let's say you all are at, uh, oh, you know what? Let's just go for it. You're in a, you're in a bar and grill ran by a couple of gnomes. Um, and uh, you've got your uh, mozzarella sticks coming out pretty soon. Um, and you found yourself a nice little room off to the side where nobody can bother you because everybody would recognize you too well. Um, we would recognize you because, and then I'd like you all to describe what you look like. I will choose somebody then. <laughs> Luke. Oh, okay. Describe Hello. your turtle for us. Well, Maroki is a large green turtle with uh, some uh, kind of like parachute pants at the bottom. He uh, has a large shell, as many turtles do, um, almost tortoise like, and each, uh, sh each uh, what is it, like shard of the shell. Um, scale, that is what I'm looking for, is painted with different markings and depictions. And in the very center is, is a phoenix, um, which denotes his mon monastic tradition. He uh, has mostly a normal turtle face with a kind of like older look to him and walks with a cane. Um, and on the very top of his head, he has a bright red teapot that uh, stays constantly balanced atop his noggin. Um, he otherwise is wearing a pack that is light um, and is otherwise unarmored besides some brown bracers at his sides. And he's probably nomming down on some mozzarella sticks that remind him of worms. Thank you, Luke. Uh, why don't we go to Luma next? Um, so, uh, the person sitting next to the wonderful, wonderful Bachian Conscious Turtle is um, a seemingly strangely gangly humanoid, um, very, very fair of skin, almost too perfect, with um, long, straight black hair that kind of curls on the end, and shockingly blue eyes, and they are... Um, just eating, munching, listening. They um, they look tired, and uh, way too hot, and um, like they really probably need to drink some water and not alcohol. But they are drinking alcohol instead of water. Um, so they're just you know eating, chilling, relaxing. Haven't seen these these other two in a while, so that's that's what they're sitting here. I'm sorry, Luma. Did uh, you describe what Genevieve was wearing? I didn't hear it that well. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't mention that at all. Um, they're wearing, uh, looks like jeans that kind of need to be replaced and a really long poncho that looks too pristine, just like her skin. It's uh, the, the poncho kind of looks like it's, it should be threadbare, but it's not, but it looks like it was handmade, stitched, on a loom, it's very, very quality. And then on their on their poncho near the neckline is a pen um, that looks like a non-assuming pen with um, an eye on it. That the eye is also like caressing another piece of cloth. It sh all that detail shouldn't fit on the pen, but if you just if you look at it, somehow it fits up. And yes, that's what they're wearing. Sorry. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, Luma. And uh, for now, because uh, Tamron won't be joining us for a little bit, uh, Rot, why don't you describe uh, yourself? Well, hello. The little goblin that's sitting on the other side of the table is me. I'm Rot. Um, I am a little, kind of a small goblin with uh, yellow eyes, and I have kind of short hair, but um, some of that hair is pulled up into a ponytail. And um, I have a huge tankard of ale, like right next to me. Not partaking in the cheese, doesn't sit well with my stomach, but that's what I look like. Um, and you know what? Let's just go ahead and describe Tamron. But Tamron isn't uh, Tamron isn't hanging out with the. Uh, you know what? Y'all didn't give me a group name, so Fancy Three it is. Um, Tamron's not hanging out with the Fancy Three because the Fancy Three's got their own little room. 
uh, to to stay away from the from the spotlight. Um, Tamron, you are here in uh, the bar and grill as well, and uh, you're at your own table, or I don't know if you're your friends, but go ahead and describe yourself. Oh well, Cameron is a halfling. She's about two feet tall, and uh, she's currently a, a little. Uh, she's dressed a little funny for the area. Uh, she uh, has a nice suit that uh is definitely from the 1920s uh though the jacket is off and and kind of draped over the bar stool that she's standing on because she's only two feet tall um <laughs> sorry the voice has it's hazardous um Her, uh, her, her frizzy blonde hair is kind of pulled back into a bit of a bun, but there's so much of it that it's almost as big as her head itself. Um, she has red suspenders and a spiffy red tie that she's kind of, like, taken out a little bit. She's in relaxed mode. She's casual. Party Fancy 3, the door opens up into your private room, and uh, one of the little uh, gnomes comes in. He's got a little apron on, and uh, he, he's got, uh, he's got like a, a white, uh, one of those white shirts with like the little string right here, and, um, and he's got a lot of flair. Um, <laughs> and he walks in, well, what, what can I order for you three? More well, of these uh, worm things that you sell here would be exquisite. Oh, I, the I, I, used to call these mozzarella sticks. If you can give me another aisle, that would be nice because I like to double fist it sometimes. Oh, okay. I'll have to make two trips, but I'll get it right up for you. And how about you, miss? Oh, no, you have not changed. Do you have anything that is not meat? The mozzarella sticks have no meat. They I, are I quite know. good. I know, but I mean, not cheese either. No cheese. You'll have to be a little bit more specific. I mean, there's a whole. I'll bring you a platter. Hi. Uh, just no animal shit. Hi. Like, bring on one of it. You don't want things that animals make, or like the poop that comes out of the butthole. Uh, 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 tomatoes, lettuce, croutons. So you do or you don't want the tomatoes? No, I like I those, those ones as well. Tomatoes, okay. Yes. You, you, you take the tomatoes and you take the lettuce and you take olives and other things that are plants and you chop them up and you put it in a bowl. Well, I guess I could make you a custom order. That's okay. I'll be right back. While we're at the custom order. Uh, okay, yes. Could Before I get I one door, more thing? I'm not going to open the door now. I will wait here for it's you, fine. sir. What? It's it's fine. I'm just running a little low. And I kind of like take the teapot off and I say, could you refill this for me? Yes, I could do that. And he grabs it from you and he runs off and he opens the door just a little bit to see if anybody's looking. And when nobody is... He scurries out and he closes the door right behind y'all. And uh, and he starts scurrying back uh, past your table, Tamron. Oh, miss, can, would you like anything else? Just another fizzy drink, please. Uh, would you like the same flavor fizz? Yes. Okay. And that's whatever it is that, that you wanted. So, <laughs> so he root beer. scurries away. <laughs> oh, a fizzy sarsaparilla. Um, yes. <laughs> So, and then you see him scurry off. Now, Tamron, you're the only one who's open, who's in the open area of the bar and grill. And uh, that's when um, you kind of, you, you hear whispers all around. People are already whispering and talking about how they think there's a couple of artificers in here and they think they're in that room, but they can't be for sure because uh, it's been pretty, uh, pretty low key. Um, and uh, when that happens, you also see a centaur walk in uh, through the, the the doors of the bar and grill. And the centaur is a, uh, it's kind of like a shorter centaur, stockier, 
gray and uh, a bigger stomach and a bit. So it's, it's got like a, let's say like a mule's body and, um, and a dark skinned man's torso uh, wearing some, some kind of fancy clothes. And uh, you see him, you see him kind of make his way to other tables and talk to them for a little bit and then uh, walk to other tables. He doesn't seem to know anybody, but he seems to be asking everybody different, uh, the same question maybe, but he's trying to get some information when he finally makes it over to your table, Tamron. Uh, hello, miss. Hi. Are you here alone? Yes. Do you mind if I sit? I've got a couple of questions. Sure. I look it up and down. Does he look dangerous? Uh, no. He seems very nice, actually. <laughs> but uh, him asking you to sit was kind of a weird question because th there's not really chairs for centaurs. So he kind of just uh, plops his hind legs down and uh, and moves a chair out of the way, and he and he gets like scoots up close to the table, and he goes, uh, "Well, have you heard of the artificers? I've heard there's a couple in this bar and grill right now." Well, I don't really know much about this place. She and and Tamron actually stands up on the table because she's only she's very very small. She stands up on the table and then and then takes a seat and kind of crosses her legs and uh, she says, "You see, I have a habit of reading things or." or maps or, or books and sometimes scrolls and, and I guess it'll wind up in new places. And uh, that seems to have happened here as well. Oh, well, how about I help you out? My name- I is... like artificers though. Art I'm, I'm looking for a couple artificers right now. Um, 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 how about I help you? You're in the old Southern part of the Panhandle, Florida. And my name's Addie. Hi, Addie. I'm Cameron. It's it's Addie, but it's okay. Um, Eddie, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Ta Tamarin? Cameron. Okay, see, now we're even. Um, it's fine. People get it wrong all the time. <laughs> and that's when the gnome uh, runs up with uh, with your fizzy drink. Oh, hello. Uh, did, you, would you, uh, did you want something to drink, too? Jeez, uh, um, I did this, this for myself. This is my new friend, I? Eddie. Did this to myself um and eddie just says oh no i'm just looking for a couple of artificers um and eddie's voice just like that changed um but anyways uh the little uh gnome dave goes uh uh uh, uh artificers uh uh did, there's none here definitely not in in any of the the special rooms okay bye and then the gnome runs off with uh, the pot of tea and uh, a platter of vegetarian non-cheese appetizers and uh, creaks the door open just a little bit and pops in. Uh, alrighty. <laughs> I, I, I kind of turn to Eddie and I say, hey, Eddie, I think I know where the artificers are, but you should stay here. Um, well, I guess that's a little, uh, cryptic, but I, I, I think I trust you and I'll, I'll stay right here hoping to get something to drink because I didn't order it. Oh, uh, and I take, uh, I, I, I kind of chug about half of my drink and I say, here, you can have the rest of this. And I slam it down on the, on the, uh, the table in front of him. It's fizzy and delicious. Uh -huh. And I hop down, uh, grab my coat, and uh, put it on. Well, that's a good fizz. I like that fizzy drink. Thank you very much. Yes. And then uh, we'll switch scenes over to uh, the private room. Oh, oh well, I think I, I think I gave him the slip. Nobody knows you're here. Here you go for you, sir. Put down his pot of tea right in front of you, Maroki. Uh -huh. And then the platter of food between Rot and Genevieve and oh and you thought I forgot he reaches into his uh behind him and he pulls out a big old tankard of ale for you Rot um which is almost as big as you because you're a tiny little gobble nice um I had a question what did you mean by you gave him the slip um but I didn't don't recall saying that well you did did I 
Yeah, you did. Did I? Uh, I maybe I did. You know, nobody needs to know that we're here, right? We uh, like this establishment. I we want to keep coming I, back to it, but yeah. if you can't hold no, no, a secret, don't, 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 don't no, 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 it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, you pay good money Sorry, for this dude. room. Nobody knows that you're here. Nobody's looking for artificers outside. It's All right. Not. Maroki is Maroki is uh, like stuffing his face with the lettuce and tomatoes that Genevieve had ordered, um, and is kind of turning to the the the, the uh, waiter or such and saying, "Yes, it would be a shame if um, we were not to come back." Jim, did did he just say you steal it? He's. You have a good choice. I do, I do. I do one of two things because there's a lot going on right now. First, I'm going to use detect thoughts because I need to know what's going on in this bartender in this bartender's head. The second thing I'm going to do, which is just a free action, is I'm going to take my hand and point to push his face away from my feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, so let's resolve the detect thoughts. Go ahead. What does uh What does good old Dave need to roll? He needs to make a wisdom save of 14 or above 14. Above a 14, let's see. What's a 17 with no modifiers because he's just a little peasant boy? Well, no, if he rolled a 17, he's fine. Yeah. So you so. can't detect his thoughts then? Yeah? Can't, can't. Too dumb. <laughs> No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's so thick. The skull is so thick. I can't yeah. pierce it. You know what? This is what happens. You try to detect thoughts and all you you just you, all the rambling that he was throwing at you in like in conversation is the same rambling you hear inside of his head. So you can't really get uh, uh get the information that you're looking for. Okay? You just hear the me theme in his head. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. At least my salad is saved. My salad. Is saved. Okay. Well, you know how to get a hold of me. I'm gonna get going now. Goodbye. I'll be back to check. Bye. And then he scurries <laughs> off. Uh, and he does the same thing with the door. He like creaks it open to make sure nobody's looking. Tamron, is anybody looking? Oh, I'm definitely like I'm. So Tamron uh, gets down off of the, the the table and goes to just sort of next to the wall. Um, are there multiple doors or just that door? It's just the one door. Just um, that door. But Dave okay. didn't seem to see you looking. So he still like skipped out and you kind of saw three silhouettes in there. And then he closed the door real quick and then he, and he scurried off into the kitchen. Okay. Um, I would have gone uh, straight over to the door and like put my ear up against it to see if I could hear anything. Alrighty, Fancy Three, what kind of conversation are you having right now? Genevieve, I do admire your taste in ordering. I always find it quite nutritious. Well, Maroki, before you eat something that she orders, maybe she, you should ask first before you start stuffing your face. I suppose that is something I should have thought of. What's that teapot for, anyway? You never oh. told me. Well, tea, of course. What do you think today is an oolong or a rooibos, perhaps, day? I haven't decided yet. An oolong? Oolong. Oolong? Like the opposite of oo short. An oolong. Oolong. You will, long. you will improve, short one. Do not worry. Oh, she's the one who needs improvements, but not you. <laughs> I believe we may all grow. Okay, can you grow me some more vegetables? I may make you some tea. Okay, I think that's a fair trade. <laughs> yeah, I, Jen is real hungry and you just took her food. You're the uh, idiot even asking. I, I may order some more if we so need. There, so, there's that growth. Good job. Cameron, you hear this discourse, but it's interrupted by the sounds of clop, 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 clop. Eddie seems to have gotten up out of his ta out of his uh, spot at the table, and he's coming over. And next thing you know, he's like bent over, and his ears against the table. He's like, well, as, what as are we listening hear, to? As soon as I hear uh, him start to come towards me, I, I snap up and I say, oh, there's nothing important going on in there. It's fine let's go back to the table are you sure hold on yeah 
I, I I hear someone outside. Is that the is that the yeah, scene that we not ordered? Quiet when she talks, so I'm, you can hear. Ne it. Neither is Eddie. Um, <laughs> Eddie is all like, "What's behind this door?" I, Some people having a meal. Just chill out. Hi. I walk over to the door and I uh, say, oh, perhaps I may order some more. And I open the door and I say, yes, could we have some more lettuce, please? I also. I oh, my. <laughs> I don't work goodness. here. I also. Little Miss Tamara, do you know who this is? Sir, sir, it's a can pleasure I, to meet you. Use, my name I is Eddie. Sleep? I oh. am confused. I, oh, also, I, we, we ordered an acapella singing. Sorry. I can't sing, but I'll try. Do -do -do, do -do -do. I right. need your help. You gotta stop now. I need your it's, help. All right, are Mr. you going Moroki? to pay us in lettuce? Uh, well, I had something else, but I guess I could get you some lettuce. We will consider your offer. What do you need? Oh, um. While they're talking, I actually grab what I can. And strangely, I have the strength to do this grabbing a centaur and like dragging them inside so that they're not talking in the door oh, grab hello. Them and close the oh, door you're Miss Genevieve as, oh, as, oh as, okay as, you're, as they get pulled in. in and I'll make myself comfortable Tamron I would believe that you're trying to dodge this centaur's legs front and back I um, will use this chance to kind of scurry in in front of him as, <laughs> as uh, Tamron comes in I'm just like Oh, suppose you may bring us lettuce. Come in. I thought there was, there was, I heard there was three of you. Where's the, oh, on the other side of the, is that, excuse me, is, I, he's trying to see you behind the, the barrel of ale, right? Uh, um, is that, but from behind the ale, there's just a hand that goes, hi. Okay. My name's Eddie. It's so, thank you so much for letting me in here. I, I have, I, I'm very desperate and I need some help. Um, and, and, All right. And, and, and I know you may have to the face. All right. Well, you, I, I just, I'm desperate. Okay. I will tell you my story. Is that okay? Dear, you might want to sit on the table so that we can listen to this sap talk. Don't, 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 don't perch up like that. Sit on the table. You can see your face. And then you see the centaur slam his butt onto the table. It's, not it's you. a little not, uncomfortable, but not, not if you, you say so, Miss Genevieve. Not you, Mott. Please. Me? Yes, you. To sit on the table. All right, I'm not going to sit on the table, but I'm going to scoot. Yes. Yes. So the tank it isn't uh, obstructing mm -hmm. me. Yes. <gasps> and he is completely starstruck by rot. <gasps> You're rot. Never would I have thought that I would have come across the fancy three. Okay, okay. Uh, so, okay, 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 this is fine. This is fine. I see that our reputation precedes us. You may you're pay us like, in lettuce. You only like I the greatest said. lettuce? How much lettuce do they have to pay you? I'll get you all the lettuce you need. What do you need us for? Oh, okay, okay. So it was, it was a while ago. I was I was living up north, and then we all got kicked out by Lord, the Lord. The Lord got kicked us all out, and we were forced to come live down here in the Everglades. And I made a friend, my best friend, Mr. Meyer. Mr. Meyer's got a house down down over uh, by Bear Lake in the Everglades. You know where that is. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. But it's down there. And anyways, I moved in. I moved in. And then all of a sudden, a lot more people started moving in. And he doesn't like it all too much. He likes his privacy, okay? And um, 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 oh, I'm so nervous. I here, recommend so. you try some of this peach oolong. You are speaking much too quickly. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna get okay. my tea or my greens. I, I also make one for Genevieve. <sighs> okay. Did you get a okay. load of this guy? She's just rambling on. I don't, I don't understand. I we'll get to the point. We're not, we're not, we're, not, we're, we're, we're scavengers. We're not, we don't rescue people. I don't understand what's going on. I don't need it. So the thing is, I know you artificers only kind of, sort of go looking for artifacts. But here's the thing. I have an artifact. It's right here. And uh, you see him kind of pull out out of his breast pocket a uh, black slate. It's like a like a shiny 
piece of glass, but it's like almost this obsidian glass. And he goes, um, I heard, I heard, and, and he looks over to Miss, uh, Miss Gen or to Genevieve and he goes, I heard that the, the historian specifically would be interested in this one. Um, and, 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 and it's worth a lot, I think, at least that's what Mr. Meyer said. And he doesn't know that I took it, but he'd understand if I'm using it to pay y'all to, well, I would like you to maybe speak to the Lord at the magical kingdom and maybe let the people go back and live there so that way they can leave Mr. Meyer alone and then we can we can just live together and be fine. I want to know I want to know DM how heavy is this this item? Um by the way that he's holding it maybe like a pound maybe like it's not very heavy. Okay, a mage hand that's been there the whole time swipes this this item. <laughs> and brings it closer to me and I take it and I push the pin on my on my poncho to really figure out what it is. I'm completely zoned out. I want to know what this item is. So I've got tunnel vision. So unfortunately that leaves the other two to kind of <laughs> say me, yay or nay. <laughs> let me get this straight. You have come from a faraway land that you may no longer live in because of a tyrannical lord, and now you are bothering His name's your... Mike! Okay, Lord Mike. Such a valiant name. And... He's not so valiant. He kicked you... us all out of our house. Do you intend to continue to interrupt me? Because I thought my talking cadence was already slow. They said Maroki was nicer in the stories, but I can understand why they changed that. I offer you tea. That is as good as you're going to get. Oh, T. And he forgot and he takes another sip. So, oh, you asked me questions, yes. So, you have evaded this, or you have run away and bothered your friend who lives on a lake. And then you are asking us to go back to fight or tell Lord Mike to let you and your friends back to that land. Is that correct? No, well, I moved in with Mr. Myers. Um, uh, Mr. Meyer, and, and we moved in. I moved in with him. We're friends. We're best friends. You'll see. You'll meet him. He'll tell you. Sorry, um, this little halfling, is it is she from where you live? Or oh. why is she? Oh, oh, hey, Tamron. You made it in. Yeah, I'm uh, easily lost. It's okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I actually heard that there were artificers here, and I like artificers, but I see you are not the type of artificer I was thinking. Oh, and what kind of artificer were you thinking? One who creates magical items. So, um, while y'all are doing this, uh, Genevieve has tapped her emblem and um, anybody who was looking would see that this eye that's in, engraved into this emblem opened up magically, like the metal in it opens up and it shines a, a little bit of light on this, uh, on this black slate that you're holding, Genevieve. And Genevieve, you're, as a historian, uh, a, a seasoned historian, you know that, uh, how about just to make it simple for everybody, that little emblem is basically a Pokedex for artifacts. Um, except this is an artifact you've never seen before. You've actually heard about it because the historians, your, uh, the dean of your, your, um, your, your faction of the historians here in Florida, um, has told a lot of people about this. This is almost like a obsidian piece of glass that with some sort of magic influence will open up a short portal uh, to view through into the ancients' lives before they disappeared. So to you, this is almost the most valuable piece of artifact that you can ever hope to find. Just remember to have the piece of wear. Oh, no, <laughs> Chucky. Um, so when I understand the value of this item, I calmly put it down on the table and look to the centaur and go, 
So is this on loan to us? Oh, you see, I'm sure there's nothing more that Mr. Meyer uh, 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 values than than his privacy. I mean, I mean, we're best friends, so he's totally cool with me being there. Um, he invited me to live in there. As a matter of fact, I helped. Oh no, him. no, no! I asked but, if this item was on loan, as in I could have it for an extended period of time if oh, I help you. No, no. See, it, if if you can help us get the 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 fiends out of the 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 bear lake then it's all yours you can just have it hmm and whose authority is that you said you took this did you not i know that mr meyer would be happy to know that it paid for his privacy hmm <laughs> it's not that sounds good enough for me. It's not my. It's not up to me if you get punished because you stole an item that I just uh, so happened to get. Just, but um, thank you for this item. Friend. Of course, you're so wonderful. Of course, you just take it out for the for the whole entirety of the situation. That's good. That's great. I just wanted to know the specifics on the item, and if you know, if I keep it, then. That's fine, but yes. as for the other stuff, uh, and then I look between the other you two You see him slowly here. go over where you've set it down and like grab it. Now that he's and... a little wary that you're just gonna take it. <laughs> nope. It's, yes, it's... you can have it when the fiends are out of his house. I don't know. I touched it. It's mine now. Well, I touched it last. Mm-hmm. You all and your worldly possessions. Are we to tarry on this longer? I have more questions for you. Drink tea, and I contemplate my next move. <laughs> I am confused at the connection between the fiends that you have talked about and the lord that you have mentioned. Oh, well, they see, okay, the, the, the lord, Mike, he's not great. He wants to be king, um, but he's not yet, I, from what I understand. Um, so he's been taking over a lot of people's land. Um, and he took over the magical kingdom, and he kicked out all the fiends that were living there, and we have nowhere else to live, so they came down here. I see. So you want us to rid Mr. Meyer, is it, of the fiends from his estate, and then go back to Lord Mike and have him take them all back. Uh, I just need you to talk to Lord Mike and ask him to and have him and convince him maybe so that the fiends can go back home. So that way they don't have to stay here. You are lucky that I am a picture of charisma. My persuasion skills are unwavering. Of course, of course, that's why I'm here. I didn't know that you three would be the ones I'd find, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy to have found you. There is not a soul that I know that has denied me after trying some of my fresh peach oolong, so don't you worry. Is it what this is because it's very good? It is. Oh, can I have some more? Will you do it? Is our only prize this strange artifact and i will i'll make you dinner at no he wouldn't as like long that. as it involves lettuce you have a deal i will get you all the lettuce heads that you require that really won't be necessary as the artifact in itself will be and then i look back to my comrades and i say as i was talking to rot in the same way if we take care of this and we get this artifact just as usual, which is our usual deal, any artifact that's brought back to uh, my historical society, we get a great amount of money. And that money I split between you three equally, as I am giving the privilege to do so, because I could just pocket all of it. But this artifact is a lot. They would give up their near chunk of what they have to have this artifact because it is the answer. It's the whole point of the historical society. If I give this to them, you'd be set for life. And then I look at the two of them. So I think this is this is a no-brainer. I can buy all the lettuce I would want. It'll be high quality and I won't have to worry about a centaur making it. No offense. 
dear. You see Eddie kind of looking at it now. He goes, uh, oh. Why don't you let me handle it? Let me, let me hold on to it. You don't oh, need it. When the I'm, fiends are out of Mr. Meyer's home, you can have I, it. No, I mean, I mean collateral. I, we don't, we don't work without payment first. So and, you um, can just hand that over to me. Also, I will give it to it. Tamron. I'm trying. To, oh. <laughs> Tamron. 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 Tamron, look at me. Tamron, look at me. I need your help. They, they're just gonna take it, and you look like a good person. If I give it to you, can I trust you to give it to them once the fiends are gone? Tamron. And I look around the room for Tamron, and also I go, I look back at the centaur and go, even if you think you're doing what I think you might be doing, you can't turn that in without one of these. And these are not duplicatable. So. Well, I know very well I could just go to a seven Alvin and turn it in because that's what you all sell your things and buy artifacts. Who do you I'm mean? Not, I'm we not a dumb are. centaur. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Jin, maybe we should just let him give, him, give the artifact to Tinrin, and then, I mean, he doesn't seem like he trusts us very much, even though we are artificial. You're trying to, I can hear you, Miss Rat, and you're trying to take it from me. Didn't say we weren't going to do the job. Well, Tamron will be my vestige to make sure the job gets done. Please. I Cameron, please, please, oh. I need you. I need you. Remember, you gave me some of your sarsaparilla. I feel like that made us pretty close. I grabbed, I grabbed the, the thing from him and start looking at it myself because um, I've never seen anything like this before. I am not from around here. Uh, this thing is super cool. I don't know what it does. All right, don't don't pull on it like that. You might break it. Hey, I look. I give uh, the rot kind of the stink eye, and I'm like, I doubt it. Oh, I, yeah? If I wanted to break it, I would. But I definitely, even if I brought it, I broke it. I could make it better, anyways. No. All right. No. I, no, I, you could not. No, you could not. And who even are you? Can yes, you I was going oh, to hi, say. Hi, I'm Cameron Lufalu. It's a pleasure to meet you. And oh I, I stick my hand up to to uh, give each of you a, uh, a handshake. Um, and uh, even just with the hand up, she's only about two and a half feet tall. So you're gonna have to bend down to. Well, I think I'm actually. Um... Quite, I'm the same height as you, so. Perfect. She'll probably turn to you first. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Timmy. Yes. I guess you're part of the crew now, aren't you? Oh, uh, that's great. I, um, I, like, turn to you and I pick up my cane because it's easier for me to meet your hand with my cane than it is my actual hand. And I go, now, Tamron, is it? I want to make sure, if you are to accompany us on this journey, that, well, I'm concerned you may slow us down, and that's saying quite a lot. Are you really equipped? Quite a lot. Excuse me, Rot, did you have something you wish to Oh, contribute? no, 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 just, uh, just keep going, it's nothing. Thank you. So... I like how it's... Are you, Fine. Tamron, equipped for such a journey? Uh, Tamron looks slightly offended. Excuse me, as she puts the, the, the phone into her, her pocket. Excuse me, but I am not even from this plane, and I couldn't even tell you how to get back here. But... I am ready for anything. I admire your brew of vitality, young one. Thanks. Well, then it's settled. You aren't coming. No, I would rather not anyways. All right. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. All right, now get out. Good luck, Tamron. 
I'll see you back. Did I say the... get out? Bye. Oh, that road. Later, Eddie. <laughs> Bye, Tamron. And <laughs> and uh, he he clops out of there. <laughs> as soon as the door closes, I pull the the thing out of the pocket and I hand it over. I'm like, here you go. I don't know why you would show Adam about that. I checked to see if there's any salad left that was left over from being munched. I don't know, Maroki, how much is left? I probably would have, like, left some bite marks in parts of it, but there's definitely probably about half of it left. I start eating and sipping tea because I need to decompress from all of that. All right, well, uh, the centaur said to go to the Magic Kingdom. Um, I, I don't know. Magical kingdom? Uh, excuse, <coughs> magical kingdom. Who, who is talking right now? It's the, your dungeon master. Who's, the, who's the, it? the magical kingdom. Uh, because it's not Disney World. He never we did. Are, but we we're are, in Florida. <laughs> have no, any of you ever no, been no, to this I know, magical I just, <laughs> kingdom? <laughs> we're, we're using magical kingdom. All right, go with me on this. <laughs> have we ever been to the magical kingdom, DM? Have we ever heard of this? Yeah, you have heard of it. Uh, I wouldn't say you've been there, but uh, uh, because it was usually overrun by fiends. Right, mm. the the red folk might copper strike me, so it's the magical kingdom. There it is. Thank you, Rat. So, um, I think once uh, Jin is done with his salad and um, I'm done with my two pictures right here, I think we should head on over. What do you think? Cameron, you you're new to our little group, so what do you think? What exactly are you doing? Like hanging out, just looking for stuff? Is that what you do? We were um, actually just having tea. Yeah, we were just Oh eating. I like tea. Here, I'll try some. It's just been a steeping. Yeah, it's head tea. I keeps a keeps put it. All right, do you all it. decide to go to the magical kingdom? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so the magical kingdom is uh, quite a ways away from the Everglades. So let's say it just takes you. Actually, Genevieve, as a historian, you have the ability to call upon teleportals. So uh, let's just say a uh, um, a uh, one of the one of your historian wizards. You called him up and uh, he came out and uh, set up a portal for you to make it all the way to the magical kingdom. On the short way from between, I guess, where we ate into the portal to wait for the portal to get set up to go through the portal, I'm prodding Tamron for information because it's like, what do you mean a different realm? What do you mean you're not from here? What do you mean? And I'm just continuously asking these questions, trying to ask it in different ways so that they give something, something new and different. Oh, well, Cameron's really an open book. She's originally from Beirut, but she goes to a place in, in a place called Louisiana every once in a while. Uh, apparently it's, it's, it's 1920 there. Um, and and there's a really cool speakeasy. I'll have to take you there sometime. It's super exciting. Wait, you're from the ancient time. I'm sorry, what? You said you were from the 1920s? Oh, I'm not from there. I just visit every now and then. It is, so you it must be a very strange time to have named something after a verb and an adjective. A speak easy. I don't get yes. it. So, uh, so we won't get into that right now. Um, <laughs> because now you have made it to the magical kingdom. All right. What's so, it look like? <laughs> so let me describe it to you. There's, a, there's big open fields of black asphalt. And there, <laughs> there's large walls around the magical kingdom where it seems most of the commoners that live inside have to go in through kind of, uh, there's not really a moat here, but there is, um, um, whatchamacallit, wow. There's an entrance, right? You gotta get in there, right? Like a gate? Yeah, like a gate. 
Um, now, when you get here, you all can hear loud shouting, but not shouting like fighting or anything like that. You hear lots of cheering. There's a lot of people just ah, cheering. It seems like something big's going on here at the Magical Kingdom. Um, and uh, and uh, as you walk in, let's just go ahead. That uh, you, you all walk in. Yes, I'm gonna say yes. You walk in. Yeah. Uh, no, I use I use um, dispel magic just in case at the gate. You anything do that. Yeah. Anything yeah, yeah, that's that. there. Yeah, you do that. So uh, you all walk in and you okay. see a large street that makes it down uh, towards this middle area. And behind this middle area, you see this big, beautiful castle with white walls and blue tips with a lot of different towers around it. Um, now, in the middle, you can see that there's a large uh, stage almost but it's also like circular. And on this stage, it's like fenced off. And inside you see, um, you see a yak folk warrior fighting uh, three little grung warriors. Um, and they're just like going at it. And you see everybody around it just cheering and, and, and going nuts. They're absolutely loving it. And on the other side of this, this, uh, uh, this little stage, you see kind of like this uh, easement almost where you see a uh, large, uh, kind of a, a like half of Maroki sized turtle. And uh, he's got a really big like crown and a scepter and like a really flourishy uh, uh, cape, you know? He's tiny, but he is using a lot of big uh, um, like clothing to make him look super fancy. Um, and he's on the like platform above this tournament kind of deal yeah yeah or? yeah so he's kind of overlooking think of it as like a gladiators arena arena okay. um and he's on the other side kind of looking down and everybody around him's cheering all right this is a um, lot it's kind of is uh, i i kind of know this place though i think my uh friend morky Merce lived here for some time Oh, well, then please do lead us in the right direction. This place is impressive. Are you having a blast, Tamron? Having a good visit? So far, so good. I mean, I... it's kind of the happiest place on Earth. Kind of. With all this fighting around. Now, Rot, did you say you if you've been here before, do you know uh, where? A this long time ago. Be? Um, I'm assuming I'm going to start pointing to the, uh, turtle that's, uh, has a crown. I'm assuming that little guy right there is the, uh, king of the castle, or mm. so you say. Um, I don't know if we can just walk up to him and speak to him, but, um, mm. Timmy, do you want to try? Up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm already on it. it you, you turned to say that, and I've, I've already started walking off to go talk to him. All right, there she goes. I'm going to get to the, to the bottom of the stage, unless anybody stops me. I say, excuse me, good king, sir. I'll follow behind. Who are you uh, addressing, Tamron? Guy standing on the uh, stage looking regal AF. Oh, up? <laughs> so, yeah. okay, so in front of you, you have a giant yak folk warrior fighting off three little grung warriors. You're ignoring them, and you're yep. trying to talk to the Lord. Yep, oh. I, I kind of go around behind them. What is like... that thing on the, the, the floor there? Everybody stop! And uh, you see the yak folk just go... Why, thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Afternoon. I'm Cameron. How are you today? Oh, not you. That's one. What are you doing here? And he points at you, Maroki. I am not understanding your address, but... Oh, oh I can't bear to look at you. What are you doing here? It appears as if your snap never knew how to stop. What are you going on about at this point? Oh, who let a turtle in here? Somebody get rid of it! I, I'm sorry, you yourself look as if you are a turtle. Is this oh, not- No, 
I'm a king. I see that, uh, but it seems as though your tea leaves aren't quite ripe. We are here for a purpose, and we are what here to find oh. Lord Mike. What Without the purpose? I oh, that's uh, it. That's it. Anybody who gets rid of all of them will get the privilege of getting the princess. Please just. And then you see, uh, you see. I'm getting the, uh, that princess. The three grung warriors <laughs> turn around. And the yak folk also goes, and they look at you, Tamron, and they go, well, all right then. And uh, <laughs> I kind of, I just like put my arms out and I say, have at if you so wish, but we'll be done before my tea cools, I'm sure. You're going to see the yak folk warrior like rush you, Tamron, but jump over you to land in front of uh, Maroki. Uh, the three, uh, one of the grung warriors is going to go, uh, like two of them are gonna like flank off to the side and jump off to get to Genevieve and Rot, and one of them's gonna come to you, uh, Tamron. So uh, if there's anything anybody wants to do now, we're gonna go into combat. Um, I break this guy's. Okay. Oh. And what do you look like, Genevieve? So this is this is too much. <laughs> so I break this guy's. So I. My body, all of the parts that is the prestigious, like pale white skin that you see, starts to protrude feathers. Feathers just start helping out of my up everywhere. I morph, I change, I get taller. My hands and my arms become wings. All of it's white with grays and spots with the crests and and orange spots everywhere. My legs are half of my body. And what you see before you is basically a seven foot tall secretary bird with a poncho. <laughs> Somehow the poncho is still as long as my body all the way down to where I guess a crotch would be for a bird. But basically I'm just right there and I just, I squawk as like, that's enough. <laughs> and I am, in, I am, engaged to battle all right anybody else want to do any preparations so, um as as the guy starts to bound towards me and over me i'm going to quick draw my wand which is the uh, dark wooden uh the dark wooden stick uh which is slightly crooked and i quickly cast um uh, uh, fire bolts at him. Like, as soon as he starts running for me. Okay, cast it. I was just wondering if I can just impose myself in between the people coming up, so. Uh, uh, yeah, why don't, uh, hold off. You're gonna get your fire bolt, but, uh, Maroki and Rot, what do you two do before, uh, this combat all starts? Because we know what, uh, we know what Tamron's gonna do. Um, I personally want to literally just like, as people are coming up, I want to get in between, I want to cover as many people on either side of me as possible. So if I can get two people within five feet of me, so I could either like attack of opportunity them or like take both of their attentions. I kind of So want... let's imagine this, uh, Maroka, you're like standing, uh, and in front of you is the stage where Tamron's right in front of you. Okay. Over her is that yak folk jumping and he's going to land right in front of you. Yep. Genevieve and Rod are behind. If this is okay with you both, Genevieve and Rod, you're on each other side, and two grung warriors are coming around you to get to them, and one staying with Tamron. So we're surrounded. You're not surrounded. They're facing you this way, and you're facing. The only one who might be surrounded would be Tamron, because Tamron will have a grung in front of her and a yak folk behind her, but the yak folk will have to get back up onto the stage over the fence to her so oh. not necessarily i basically want to shift so that i am almost literally like standing over um rot i can't, I can't literally do that but like literally like like behind her maybe or like yeah. with yeah okay so then you shift over to the left okay yeah yeah can i try something that's totally not in the rules uh let me hear it first <laughs> Can I go and see what's about to happen with specifically Tamron being uh, kind of like surrounded on either side of these two people mm -hmm. and walk up uh, and kind of like run up to Tamron 
and try to lift Tamron up and place her on nope. my shell? Nope. Okay. Uh, this is there's not much time and uh, that's fine. No, no. It's, uh, it's and fine. Uh, actually, I I hold on, please. <laughs> I, I made a mistake and my eyes moved past the spell that I really wanted to use. I thought I didn't repair it, did. Um, so as that guy comes up to me, I actually cast slow on him and everybody else uh, that's around me that, that is hostile within a 40 foot cube. Okay, that would hit all of them. Okay, so- can, Up to uh, six creatures. Okay, so what does that do for us? Uh, make a wisdom save. Okay, so I will do the grungs all at once and one for the yak folk. Uh, what was it again? Uh, it's a wisdom? wisdom save, DC 15. The Yak Folk got 13, so he failed. And the Grungs did a flat 17. So the Yak Folk is launching over your head slowly. Yep. So it takes a negative two to its AC and deck saves. It can't use reactions. On its turn, it can either use an action or a bonus action, but not both. And regardless of its abilities or magic items, it can't make more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. You got um, it. Also, can, is it a spellcaster at all? No. Then don't worry about the last part. Mm -hmm. um, it can make a uh, another uh, save at the end of each of its turn. Okay, another save at the end of the turn. Okay. All righty, uh, Rot. All right. Um, since the um Yek warrior is uh jumping real slow, I'd like to take out my short bow and try and shoot it in the eye, if okay. I could. Um. Okay. So looks like we're getting into uh initiative. So why don't we all roll initiative real quick? So, that's not very good for you. Hold on, let me get the uh, enemies going real quick, okay? Alrighty, uh, anybody higher than a 13, or actually, uh, I'm sorry, we'll do it the way Camille does it. Uh, anybody get higher than a 20? 15? 19. You got 19. Okay, so we got Maroki. All righty. Uh, higher than a 10. 14. 13. All righty. Oh. 14 was Tamron, right? Uh, who got a 13? Me. Re roll for me. Re roll. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. Ah. <laughs> Worse than before. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What'd you get? Seven plus four. That's a fun. Okay, so it's just Jen over here. Okay. All I right. got twelve. Alrighty, so uh Tamron uh just uh quickly shot that uh that slow spell. Baroki, you'll be you'll be next. Okay. So uh can you uh, the the Yak folk has now put himself in between me and Tamron, is that correct? Essentially, but behind him is a raised stage with a fence. So um, he has no way to like get to her unless uh, he spends a lot of time doing it. Gotcha. So it's me, him, fence, Tamron, Grung, correct? Grung, correct. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to go up to the yak and uh, I say, um, I say, I apologize for you having to represent someone of so young and such naive action. Well, that goes your six seconds of combat, uh, so. <laughs> I just want to punch it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take two of my uh, natural claws and take two large swipes at him. Okay, yeah, go for it. Ooh, the first one's a crit, okay. First all right, all right. <laughs> all um, right. Do you want me to roll damage first or? Um, or do both at once? Yeah, do both at once. Okay, the next one is going to be a 25. That hits. <laughs> okay, so it'll be 24. Uh, it's gonna be nine plus four is 13 damage on the first attack. That's the crit. Um, and then 1d4. 
That's going to be nine damage on the second attack. Um, and I would like to use uh, at a key point to okay. uh, try to stunning fist him. Okay. So he needs to make a constitution. up. He needs to get a constitution saving throw, please. Constitution saving throw. He rolled a total of uh, natural 20. Okay. He's which is not 22. Stunned. All right. Um, and then I. Uh, I guess I'm just going to take a flurry of blows as my bonus action. Okay. And yeah, two more attacks. That's going to be a 20 something and an 18. Okay, that hits. Both of them hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then that is going to be uh, eight damage on the first and eight damage on the second. So 16 damage. Alrighty. Yeah, you did. You oh go ahead. Were you gonna say something? Oh no, that's my turn. That's what I was yeah, okay. Say. So you uh yeah, he was a pretty easy target. He wasn't moving that quick, and uh you were able to land all these blows on him, but um uh you weren't able to stun him all too well. Um anyways, uh we'll go on to the next round or next turn, which is Tamron. Oh, how many are right next to me? Just the one grung. Just the one? Oh, okay, fine. I will, um, ooh. I guess I will, uh, grab, grab the dagger that's, that's, uh, held, held at my, uh, my hip, and I will cast Booming Blade with it. Um, okay. uh, so I'm going to, it's melee attack. <laughs> Oh gosh, uh, that's probably not gonna hit. Well, let's see. What is it? Uh, hold on, hold on. Where's my plus two? It... Oh yeah, that's a nine. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that misses. I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. Uh, cute. It's all I got. Okay. Alrighty. Um, alrighty. That makes it the Grung's turn. So we'll go with uh, Grung number one is the one in front of you, Tamran, and the other two are over by Rod. Uh, well, actually, one of them is over by Rod, and the other one is over by itself. It's going to have to try to make its way. So the Grung right in front of you, Tamran, will uh, uh, do something called a mesmerizing chur. It makes a little noise, um, and uh, you are the only one within 15 feet, so you must succeed on a DC 12 wisdom saving throw. Is it against Frightened? No. Okay, just check. It's against Stunned, so if you fail, you'll be stunned. Perfect, that's great. 13. 13? You save. <laughs> so oh, this, this little grum is just sitting there. You're really and, uh, cute. Did you just, know that? And you're just staring at him. <laughs> um, so the other two grunks hear that, and they both in unison start going in front of uh, uh, Rod, Genevieve, and Maroki. So you all need to roll a DC. Uh, with saving, right? Yeah. That's a nat 20 for me. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Australian, and so who was that? Who was talking right now? It was a nat 20 for me. I can't do it when I'm a nat 20. <laughs> I'm too excited. <laughs> Saves. Wisdom. Uh, 11. Uh-oh, you are stunned. Oh, I know. Can I do it again? Uh, your next turn. Or at the end I of your mean, turn. I wanted to use the thingy I was given. Uh, oh, it doesn't have to be a secret. Tell us what you have. Oh, well, uh, thank, thanks for, to some magic, some, some black magic I was given. Um, 
an auto crit and a um, reroll or okay. an energy roll. So yes, yeah, so, yeah. So go ahead. Which one do you want to do? I want to do um, the reroll. The reroll? Okay, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Give myself a little bit of. Yeah, the advantage. Go for it. Yeah. Is it roll with advantage or just reroll? So re-rolling it is your advantage. Oh, okay, gotcha. So normally, uh, I mean, it's no new to you, but normally, like, if you want to use an advantage, you roll um, before you find out the outcome. Um, but since I told you it's a DC saving throw of 12, you already knew what it was going to be, so it's no big deal. So uh, just go ahead and re-roll. Uh, okay, I got 20. Wow, y'all <laughs> just staring at these little grungs making weird noises for some reason. What the heck's going on? What do they look like again? Uh, you heard it. No. I... <laughs> Maroki. She did say look, not sound, but oh. thank you. <laughs> Wait, we need the noise too, it's fine. <laughs> Wait, is it in slow motion? So they're like, all righty, Maroki. <laughs> <laughs> they're not slow, it only the minute the, 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 the yak focus. Okay, well, um, how is this guy looking? Not good. Okay. No, no, no but um, Maroki, it's not your turn. You need a, you need a save. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what kind of save? <laughs> Damn it! I thought it was only them two. I'm sorry. No, it's all of you because they, they're all. You've got two of them next to you. Um, um, but uh, it's a, a wisdom saving throw. All right, so twelve. You rolled a twelve. Yeah. That, uh, that goes to the grung. So you are stunned. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I what are I will... they just uh, is it a magic thing or is it like st like they just like cast? Yeah, it's one of their abilities. The grungs are able, it's called a uh, it's called a uh, mesmerizing chur. I don't know what a churring noise is, so I made it up and that's what we got. All right, okay. Uh, Can you demonstrate it for people who are not here? Is, we need to go to break soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, in any case, it is uh, Jen's turn. Or Genevieve, I'm sorry. Rot just gave you that nickname, it's, and now it's stuck. It's okay. That's what I I, I wear it as a, as pridefully. Um, <laughs> what is right in front of me? Right in front of you is one grung. Off to your right is Maroki. In front of Maroki is the yak folk, and I guess right in front of you is Rot. But in front of Rot is uh, grung. Where's no the grung. Turtle King? The Turtle King is all the way on the other side of the stage up high on a easement looking down at you all. They By the way, me. the crowd's going wild. They all <laughs> loved the churring. <laughs> Nothing else, just just the right. crowd. Um, so they can see me just fine. Okay, I wanna just double check to make sure that I can actually do this. So just a second. Why can't I use two screens at once? That would be nice. Sorry, I'm taking so long. That's okay. Rot, you'll be next, all right? Okay, so it doesn't tell me that there's a um, distance that is a minimum or maximum for this. So what That's I want to do is I want to use words of terror. Okay, words of oh. terror, huh? Let's see. Um, Okay, uh, go, go ahead. Uh, words of terror. Uh, I've never heard of that spell, so let's find out what it is. I can read it for you if you want. Yeah, yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Words of terror. Once per short rest, you can speak to a humanoid alone for one minute and cause it to become frightened of you or another creature of your choice. If it fails a wisdom saving throw of DC 14 for one hour or until it or its allies are attacked or damaged. Okay, so uh, it said that you have to talk to him for a minute? Mm-hmm. Because each round of combat is only six seconds. Okay, so you'll, so so it you'll probably you'll be spending the whole time, 10 rounds basically, uh, just oh, standing there talking. 10 rounds? Okay, never mind. We don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for later. All right. Good out of combat thing, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I was thinking about doing that, but 
combat happened, but yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a dagger um, <laughs> at the nearest enemy. So I'm going to step gently, which I don't have to because I'm tall. I'm just step <laughs> over right. Okay. And my out of my beak, like suddenly it's just like a dagger out of my beak. Okay. I aim at the nearest enemy and I just almost like a gross cough and it shoots in the direction of the what nearest is, enemy. What does a gross cough sound like? <laughs> like a hacking cough, but it's mixed with a hacking cough and a shout. Oh. So that's what's happening with this dagger. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, let's see if I hit. This yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's see here. 17 plus 6. That hits. Cool. I'm going to use, I, I, this is a action on top of that. Uh, I'm going to use, where is it? I can't find what I want when I want it. <laughs> oh, it's a spell. Okay, so I'm basically using a spell called, or it's a, not a spell, it's a other, sorry, I am not being smooth. <laughs> no worries. So, I'm gonna hit them, I need to roll for damage anyway. So uh huh. Dagger. Roll dice. Thank you, computer. <laughs> 1d6 plus... Wait. Yeah, 1d4 plus 2. So let's roll. This 3 plus 2 is 5 on top of the thing I'm trying to do. There it is. Uh, so, Psychic Blades. <laughs> I want to use Psychic Blades. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one use of my Bardic Inspiration to deal an extra 3d6 um, psychic damage. Love it. Okay. So do that's it. what I wanted to do. Um, so <laughs> yeah, do it. Let's go. So five plus whatever I'm about to roll right now. Okay. Six, one, two, three, roll. Five, ten, fourteen. Okay. <laughs> 14 plus, what was it, 5? 19. 19, yeah. So that the little, uh, the dagger comes out of your mouth and you, <clears throat> and it comes straight out and it hits that grung. Um, by the way, let's use uh, colors to describe which grung is which. So the one in front of you is going to be the green one, or the yellow one, I mean. And it catches him right in the chest. He goes, Ugh, he's, oh, and he <laughs> like, falls back. Oh, rock! Look what they did to. Uh, and he passes out. Um, <laughs> and uh, is that the end of your turn, Jen? Yes. Did I miss it? I'm sorry. I'm gonna assume it's the end of your turn then. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Rot. What do you do? Uh, okay. Uh, the Yik Warrior. Um, how's he looking? Not great. All right, I'm gonna shoot him in the eye. Shoot like him. Like I wanted to. So, Hit him. Uh, I'm pulling out my sharp bow and I will aim for his ocular region. His eye, <laughs> okay. You're gonna know, shoot him in the peepers. <laughs> All right, that is I 15 plus 7. Yeah, don't worry. He's got a negative 2 right now, thanks to Eris. Oh, no. So, yeah. I don't have my cheat sheet. What is what you... a D6? <laughs> what do you mean? It's the regular one. <laughs> You're panicking, Stacy. It's like... Okay, 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 okay. 1D6 plus 3. That is a 6. And that's a 3. So six, seven, eight, nine. Nine points uh -huh. of damage. Nine points of damage. Mm -hmm. Oh no! And you you got him. Right in the eye. Oh 
and I, I'm not gonna move anywhere. There's no place to move in I'm right by Jin, so feeling safe. Aren't you a level 10 rogue? Is, can you do more actions? It's only one per action. Attacks oh. per action, one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alrighty, that makes it the Yak folks turn. And he's freaking out right now. Ooh, uh, and he, uh, he just starts blindly swinging his... Uh, his uh his great sword uh <laughs> at Maroki presumably presumably where he thinks you are Maroki um so let's see and I think he's got some stuff I mean I'm also uh, stunned okay, so he will have advantage I think there we go so good because I was an eight that's not much better so eight plus so does 14 hit no it doesn't at all does not hit and he's just blindly like oh and he can't do much more, but he can save again, right, Eris? Does he save with the seven? <laughs> no! Alrighty! The, uh, Maroki, how do you respond? Uh, well, I'm stunned, so I need to try to get out of stun, um, which I guess is just another save, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is it, and it's whiz? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh... Uh, you can't move, can speak only on the spell Uh, so, uh, you're incapacitated. Yeah, so, let's see. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and save again. Okay, 17. Uh, there you go. You're out. You gooch. Okay, was that my action or, uh... uh since I'm not the best DM and I don't know all the rules that much, just go ahead and do something. Okay, um, well, I'm going to kind of come back to my senses. Maroki is going to, like re-energize come back to life and i turn to this yak guy who's bl blindly flailing around and i just say you're lucky you did not disturb my tea and i give him another punch <laughs> um another two punches actually hit him get him uh oh wow those were both awful uh that was an 11 and a 15 to hit uh that hits yeah both of them yeah Oh, okay, cool. All you right. said eleven and a fifteen, right? That is correct. Yeah, yeah. He's he's got an a right. AC of eight right now. Seven on the first one, and uh, five on the second hit for my two attacks for my action. How much total again? Uh, that was uh, seven and five, uh, twelve damage total. All righty. Yeah, he. <laughs> you punch him, and he and he and he just like Ugh! and like he's holding on to specifically like tri like he rips out the 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 uh, arrow out of his eye but he like he trips and he falls back is he... um he's still like squirming around um so he's not like defeated per se um but he's uh he's he's pretty not looking great as a bonus action just for flavor i would like to take is he on, is he on the ground by the way or no yeah. okay as my bonus action i'm going to take my teapot from my head and I'm going to say, this will warm you up. And I whack him with it as an unarmed strike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll allow that, it. It's a 19. Oh, that hits, yeah. Oh, and that'll be max damage. 10 damage as this <laughs> big old teapot whacks him over the head. <laughs> and you hit him across the head. You actually catch one of his horns and it chips off. And next thing you know, he just goes, uh. I appreciate the tea so much that I sometimes pass out too. And that's my turn. <laughs> Tamron, it's your turn. You have the uh, green, uh, <laughs> the green brung in front of you. Um, I'm also like right up against the stage too, right? Right. Okay. Can I see the top of the stage or any area above it? Yeah, you can. It's it's an open stage, so you can see. I, I hope I'm answering your question correctly, but like, yeah, you can see all the people around you, and every time. You know, they loved Maroki's little tea, tea, teapot slap. Um, they're going nuts right now, so it's almost deafening out there. Just, ah! Okay, I'm going to say, hey, it, it was really nice hanging out with you, but I got to go. And I'm going to cast Thunderstep uh, to transport myself uh, essentially just over the stage so I can fall harmlessly onto it. Um, Wait, which stage As, are you talking about? The one where the Lord's at? or Because you're already on top of a stage. The one where the Lord's at. Okay. 
Um, is there a that's rain? That's the on one it? I was. Uh, da, 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 da. That's why I was asking. Um, Sorry, I thought you meant the stage you were on. No, it's a ninety foot stage, or ninety uh, foot range. Yeah, he, he's a little farther than that. Well, not a little bit. He's okay. pretty farther than that because the stage itself is like uh, thirty feet in diameter itself, and he's up even higher than that. Okay. Um, well, I I just want to get away from this dude up where he can't reach me. Uh, so my back is up against a stage. I'm going to get over onto that stage so he's not immediately up against me. Um, so think of it as like a wrestling ring, right? So you're like up on a stage and there's like bars that you kind of went through to get oh. up. Oh, I would not have done that. <laughs> um, no, I. So like you can I like slip out really confused. easily if you yes, like because you're I small. Would, I do not. Well. <sighs> if I actually just leave, he's going to try to attack me. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i'm still casting thunder step but i'm getting the heck out of here i'm getting as far away as possible so put me 90 feet away i don't want to be anywhere near anybody who's attacking any of us do you want to be because you can use that 90 feet to get closer to the lord or behind genevieve and rock uh closer to the lord possibly somewhere up kind of high okay yeah so why don't we say that you uh use that 90 feet to get kind of up into the audience where they're all like sitting in the in the like bleacher type is that okay sure yeah but it's closer to the stage so you have to really do, or to where the lord's at you'd have to like climb up the bleachers to the top and then like get around to them okay yeah sound good yeah sorry okay. i was completely mistaken where i was okay that, that's I did not at my all fault. want to be on that stage i wanted to be in the lord's stage Oh, <laughs> uh, I had no desire to be on that stage. Okay, cool. Okay, well, you're yeah, gone I'm now. off. Yeah. Uh, so while, as I leave, uh, make a constitution save for any creature within 10 feet of where I was. Okay, so it's just that one grunk. And he's yeah. going to do a con save of total of six. Okay, so he's taking... That's not great. Yeah, no, he's taking 3d10 uh, thunder damage. Um that's pretty good uh 15 thunder damage <laughs> with that 15 thunder damage you just see the little grung just like <laughs> and then like he just like falls over like <laughs> he's gone and i appear in the stands uh next to some lady I can, excuse me and i continue moving towards the uh, lord's area um i don't move very far they're all like clapping it cheering at you feet, patting but... you on the back that was so great ah! hey. okay uh let's see that makes it the, the remaining grung's turn and he's closest to maroki um so uh maroki you see him uh you see him like squat down and he like aims his body at you and he just jumps straight at you and you just see him like tap oh, like this um so uh he's actually just gonna he's just gonna like hit against your sh your, your shell yeah <laughs> and go oh, and fall over um but your shell starts to like tingle and start to burn almost. Um, so roll a constitution saving throw. Okay. That's an 18. 18? So you saved. Um, but if you look over at your at your shell where he hit you, there's just like this viscous liquid that came off of this grung's body. There's even like snot lines from where he hit you and he fell off on the floor um and uh that's it for his turn that makes it uh jen's turn uh, okay some questions where that last enemy is it behind me or in front of me so maroki's off to your right up a, up a little bit and then right next to him on his right is where that last enemy's at okay so i kind of like owl turn over to that enemy so I stand, I'm standing still, but my head just like goes 
as far as it needs to go to look straight at that enemy. Okay. And depending on if I if they make a constitution not constitution wisdom saving throw of fourteen, I'll let you know what I use. I mean I use this as whispers, but I'll sure, let you know 14. what they hear. <laughs> uh let's see what they hear first and see if it uh, does anything to them. Okay, hold on. Yeah, get ready. Hold on. Okay. All right, let me know if you guys can hear this. Uh-uh, not so much. Can y'all hear that? Just a smidgen? Dang. So basically, they hear the hamster dance. <laughs> Okay. They hear the hamster dance, and depending on if it hits, it will intensify to just a startling volume. Higher okay. and higher and higher. Um, I'm so... doing this at the... Uh, what level is this that I'm looking at right now? My computer would be nice to me. Fourth level. Okay. Uh, what save did uh, it need to make again? Wisdom 14. 14, huh? Well, it rolled a flat seven. Sweet. So they are listening to now to the hamster dance, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And you so. just see him. <laughs> and um, six, six, D6. That's what I'm going to roll for. Let's roll it. Let's see what happens. I love rolling six dice. Oh, I can't read. <laughs> I'm sorry. 19. Damage? Damage, yeah. Yeah, so he, as soon as, like, his tongue sticks out as he's, like, screaming, ah! like, it just cuts short, and he falls over. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Um, that is the end of combat. So... Before we get to, into uh, Tamron's conversation with the Lord, I'd say, uh, why don't we take a short bio break, uh, roll a couple of ads if we can, um, and get some more uh, donations ready for good causes. And uh, I'm going to go use a bathroom. See you in a bit, y'all. Welcome back, all our open for adventure friends. Um, let's do a small, tiny, itty bitty recap. Uh, the fancy three were caught inside of Dave's Bar and Grill by Eddie, the centaur that has uh, tasked them and prepaid them to uh, speak to the Lord, Lord Mike, a tiny turtle that rules over the magical kingdom uh, to allow all the fiends that used to reside there to live back uh, there again so they can get out of Mr. Meyer's home by Bear Lake in the Everglades. They have been joined by Tamron, who is supposed to ensure they get the job done before they get their prize, but uh, it's already been handed over, but they're all people of their word. So they are now in the magical kingdom and uh, they have defeated a yak folk and a trio of grung warriors. Um, so we are gonna switch straight over to Tamron who has Thunder stepped her way into the audience and is uh, making her way through up towards the uh, the outlook for where the Lord Mike was looking down on the events. Uh, righty, Tamron. Uh, um, I suppose. <clears throat> excuse me, sir. Excuse me, madam. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, yes. You two can excuse me. Oh, that hey, was so cool. Hey. Yeah. Everybody's screaming, clapping. You, Mr. Lord, sir, we would like to speak to you. We are trying to just talk here. Yes, yes. Come on in. My champions, all uh, four of you. You have just one the pleasure, the, the right, and just the privilege of retrieving me a princess. Uh, 
That was not why we are here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. but, and then he looks over to his side and um, you see him look over at a mirror and he kind of like eyes it and he goes, all right, yes, no, I need the princess though. So you did it. Congratulations. Before we get to any of your silly games, we have come with a purpose and you must agree to it before we do anything of the sort, especially for throwing people to fight at well, us. Well, see all these people fight for the pleasure and the privilege and you're my champions. I suppose so, but you must agree to take the fiends back that you left. Uh, that the you fiends, the leave. fiends, the what, what fiends? The fiends, the fiends, the fiends. What? Anybody know? What are you, what's he talking about, the fiends? Is your tea not steeped? We were told that there were fiends that came from this place. Oh, the gallant peasantry? Oh, yes, they've been kicked out. This is my kingdom. Uh, so the big bird that's behind all of them, like, hunt, like it's not its wings against its body, but then it does... I can only explain what is an owly thing to do and kind of swirls its head until it's right there next to the king. Okay, so, so Genevieve first, has so Genevieve yeah. has also made her way up to Yeah. Uh is there, so then everybody then. Let's yeah. just go ahead and Okay, everybody's yeah. there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so you did the you did I, the little I, sassy owl. It's move. like and then just gets right there in the face and goes, You are talking too much we need information and depending on what you give you won't have ringing in your ears guards guards your life. guards this one's <laughs> getting too close Hawk. <laughs> i want to roll intimidation to get what i want uh okay That is 19 plus 6. 19 plus 6? Yep. Yeah, so it, it worked, but he did call over the guard. So now we have um, um, a couple of minotaurs and a couple of yak folk that came up and kind of surrounded him. And he's like, he's, he's a tiny turtle. He's about rot and tamarind size. He's a, he's a very short turtle. Um, and he's hiding behind the yak folk, and he's just like, Ugh. Look Ugh. now, there's there's no reason why we need to get violent here. As you can see, we've barely done anything and defeated your finest warriors. Anywho, um, how about letting the people back in their houses? Because kicking them out is wrong. Oh. <laughs> okay. But give me the princess first. What princess are you talking about? You hear just a <clears throat> over off to your left. I would, you know, because it was his right, so it'd be your left. And you see a giant mirror on the wall with a white face in it. Um, I uh, I told him about a princess in Miami. Uh, you'll have to you'll have to get the the princess, but it's guarded by a. A dragon, um, but he just needs the princess. And, and now listen here, Mia. This isn't what was part of the deal. All right, I'm not gonna go gallivanting around the, the what, bayou. What, what? 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 What deal, uh, g Goblin? Uh, well. Yes. Yes. I kind of just clear my throat. <laughs> Explain yourself where this princess may be found in Miami and why we should have any deal oh. with your oh. princess. Oh. Mirror, just take care of it, please. And uh, you see him like walking back and, and the mirror kind of stays. He's like, uh, oh, okay. Um, and uh, and uh, he kind of motions. Well, he goes like this, like to come over closer to him because he's a mirror and he can't move. Okay, I go over very like hesitantly 
and he goes, okay, so um, you see that down there? And he point and he kind of like looks down at your feet, and you see a bunch of glasses of uh, a bunch of like shards of broken mirror. He goes, don't cause me any trouble. I'll tell you what you need, but you gotta go, all right? And he goes, uh, there's a princess hidden in one of the towers at the top of one of the towers in Miami. It, I think it's it's a, 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 a tower of four seasons or something like that. And it's guarded by a, a dragon. Oh. But, but you can tell the Lord Mike wouldn't be able to get it, get her and save him herself. So he put on this tournament to send his strongest warrior and the privilege of doing it. Um, so um, that's you for now. How far is Miami? What's she look like? Uh, uh, she's got a dress and a tiara, I think. Red hair, maybe. I haven't really seen her. Got a portrait? Does she like pink? I'm a magical mirror. I can show you. Okay. (laughs) And then the mirror, like, swirls and he disappears. And then you see um, in the penthouse suite of one of these towers uh, with just regal uh, 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 couches and a bed and tapestries and everything. And you just see... um, a uh, a human woman in a uh, very beautiful white uh, dress. It's not elegant or anything, but it's very pretty and, and simple. And she's got uh, red hair, and she's kind of just staring out through the windows towards the uh, the uh, Atlantic Ocean. We see the face. No, you just see her from behind. She looks like kind of a person who likes to get caught in the rain. I lean into the uh, mirror a little bit and I say. I don't think she could get it either. Oh, we definitely couldn't. I hope you two, you four can maybe, but I don't know. If the agreement is made that the people will be left, let back into this kingdom, then fine, we will do this soft shells work for him. I have a question. What if his princess falls in love with me instead? Because I'm, you know, and I, I kind of put my wishes. thumbs under my suspenders. I'm pretty snazzy with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that is a valid concern. Good. Well, question. then I, then I guess, um, then I guess you don't have to bring her back. But he won't let the fiends come back, I guess, and he'll just keep sending people until they come back with the princess. Well. How far is Miami from here? You would know that it's pretty far, but you also would know as Stacy that this is a one shot, so we'll just do a little montage for you to get there. Right, well, I mean, I guess we gotta go to Miami. <sighs> like some higher power is telling me that we get there pretty fast, so. <laughs> And going like to Miami. Just, just, just be careful because there's, there's a pretty possessive dragon there. So, um, just be careful, okay? I lean my head down to rock, and it's it's comical, kind of how I lean down because it's short, tall. So I almost like bend my whole body in half, and my head is like upside down. And I'm talking to rock, and I whisper as much as I can whisper and go. I could, I could discuss with myself, but I don't know what she looks like. On the way out. If, if you do, then you might have to stay here forever. So I don't think that's a real good idea. Oh, who would keep me here? I'm just here. That's true. I wonder if you might be stuck there for all four seasons. That <laughs> must be why it's called that. Let's go. Julie, Make haste. This is a great idea. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think you have something, Genevieve. So we can we can go rescue the princess if she wants to leave. If she doesn't, then she can just stay there. And then we come back and you pretend to be the princess and then we can we can have you escape and say, I don't I don't love you and, and, and all that stuff. That way he can he can stop his search. So after that, I wait. 
I wait until we're outside of the, the place while Tamron has said all of these things and we've discussed all these things safely out of earshot of anyone who cared. When you're done saying that, I just like plop down, like as if I roosted, like plop down. So I'm right there, lean my head forward, look at you and go, uh-huh. I am not your wingman. <laughs> You Stop. do have wings, though. But I know. I I was. It was just a great one. Saying. It was a great one. Yeah. No. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 I will not help you during your mating season or off mating season. You do your own mating. You do your own winging. Stop it. And then I, I stand back up. You can't talk to me much at all. It's a cheetah. Well, luckily for me, I'm uh, really loud. So, you will hear that I don't expect anybody to be my wingman. I don't need help. Okay, I got this on my own. But if she doesn't want to marry the guy, then we can make her. She she is pretty snazzy, I gotta say. Like, look at his fingers. They're great. They're, like, nice and red. Already off. <laughs> Are we making our way to Miami? Yes. Yes, we're going to Miami. <laughs> As you walk away, um, the uh, mirror yells back at you, Brickle in 14th! And then, um, and that's the uh, the cross streets of where you'll find the Four Seasons <laughs> tower that you're looking for. Um, and uh, you're loving it, and you're in Miami. Uh, and you're standing on Brickle Street looking at this enormous, beautiful tower. Now, uh, Cameron, you're not too used to being in the big city because you come from a different plane. But uh, Genevieve, Maroki, and Rot, this is just another tower. This one actually looks a little bit more... Uh, most towers that you come across have a lot of vines and vegetation growing up above up onto it. And... Um, and this one seems like one that's the farther up you go, it looks like there's almost like a line of where it kind of just stops. And if you look at it pretty closely, you can tell that it looks like it's, it's been burnt. It, it, it doesn't keep growing past that because it's burnt somehow. Um, so um, there you go. You're at the entrance of this tower. So the... Uh... Mir was telling us that there's a dragon in here, so I'm not really too keen on going in like guns of life and kind of thing. Yes, uh, we should avoid it at all costs. But if we can't, I have a very strong chamomile that might work. For my anxiety? For the dragon to sleep. No one I... survived it. Oh, okay. Very strong. <laughs> but, uh, Shall we go in? Um, see why not? We should probably try to be quiet. Is there like a secret entrance or anywhere that uh, I could see? Can I make, can I look around and see if there is another way, like a secret way of entering? While she's doing that, I'm going to cast Detect Magic. Uh, so you actually won't be able to detect uh, any magic. Um, I mean, you cast it, but there's not really any magic around for you to detect besides the uh, the magical art of, or magical like weapons and, and things that you all are carrying. Um, and Rot, um, you come from San Francisco, um, so there you've been around big cities, so there's always a back entrance. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, you could probably find like a uh, like a uh, uh, I don't know. I more than say back entrance. There's more entrances to this tower than just the front. Hey yo, it's uh, over here. Uh, there's a little entrance uh, better than the front entrance, I'd say. You wanna go this way? Let's go. Let's go. I trust your instincts, Rock. Let's go. I'm going to start going in, if that's okay. Okay. Is everybody following Rod, or is it just... Yep. I am following, but I am asking if a seven-foot creature can go through this entrance. 
Yeah, you'll have to duck a little bit, um, but it's just like a, a six foot five tall, like little like door that you can come through. Okay, and the tower because it was burnt at the top. Did there seem to be any way to get like hypothetically, if anybody flew, they were flying or ha was a flying creature, could they enter to the tower from the top? Um, or can we ascertain that from where we were? Uh, you can't yeah. really see what's on the roof, but you know you can get to the roof most likely. Yeah. Cat, cat powers. You say cat, um, oh, oh, right. <laughs> um, okay, okay. I follow. Okay. You made your way into the kitchen. Um, in this, everything here, you just see um, shiny tables, uh, Maroki, Genevieve, and Rot. You've kind of seen this a lot. Um, but it's a, it's not bright because there's no lights on, but uh, from the, the light that's kind of casting inside from, uh, from outside, you, it, it kind of like almost lights up the whole room because everything kind of uh, uh, reflects light into the whole room and everything's like this smooth silver color. Um, and it's a big uh, kitchen type thing. Um, and um, you actually see um, some ashes of burnt nights, uh, like uh, towards the end of this room uh, in an entrance to another room. Like there's a couple that look like they were coming th your way, but they were kind of, uh, they, they were caught on fire. Hmm. Don't look too good. Um, so is there any other doors besides that one or? Uh, just, there's yeah, just the one that you came in through and then uh, that one, it's a double door one that opens up. Okay, um, can I go over to the door and then can I try and like sneak peek a little bit? Yeah, why don't you roll stealth? Oh, a rogue rolling stealth, but I don't think that that's my forte. <laughs> uh, that is a 17 plus 11. 17 plus 11? Yeah, yeah. that's really good. Um, so you peek it through the doors and it's pretty dark in there as well. Uh, there's some beams of light coming in through a lot of the uh, walls that are basically just a glass on the outside of this, uh, this tower. And what you're looking down on, it looks more like um, a, a just like, it's like a stairway that goes up, but it's really big. But on the other side, there's another door. In this um, stairway, as you look up onto the stairs, you see more uh, different types of creatures. You see like, you see a bugbear standing still. But with some of the light that's refracting, refracting through this, this, this big open atrium, you see that it's it's standing still because it looks like a uh, a blue glass statue of a bugbear. And then up top, you'll see uh, you'll see like a Yuan T look like it was like like about to 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 hit something with its sword. And you see all different types of these heroic looking uh, creatures, but they're in action poses turned into this uh, this uh, blue glass. Okay. Hi. Have we ever seen these types of, uh, of, of, of monuments or statues in our travels? Um, why don't you roll for uh, history, Maroki? Okay. Does anything yeah. come up on my detect magic? Because it goes for 10 minutes. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Radius for that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe. Uh, no. Maroki got a 7. A seven? No, you have not, Maroki. This is all okay. new for you. But but you can't see this anyways because it's only rot looking. Okay. But you will, obviously, if you go in there. Behind rot, I just kind of like unconscious, like right behind rot, not realizing that they're trying to be oh. silly. I go, rot, uh, what have you found? You're so big, but you're so sneaky. Uh, um. Well, if you look up there, there's like... um glass stitches that are um, like a bugbear and like other people, I guess, but I don't know why they're there. Um, hmm. Would you like me to take 
Do a lead in case we run into danger. Uh, by all means, I don't. I don't hear a coughing, so if you want to, you can. I see no reason why not, and I just open up the door and I walk in without. Uh, I no. Without much hesitation. No, stop! Don't. <laughs> I'm not being loud. That was just... really effortless. That, that was like, no, was <laughs> um, so um so uh as you do that, you do hear the echo of opening the uh the doors go up and you can it kind of bounces up through this little atrium up the stairs. Um and uh you don't I mean nothing else really happens besides if you want to try to go up the stairs, I don't know. I'm gonna uh, kind of like make my way to the center and then like motion back. Like, can I do a perception check to see if there's anyone like around or like any danger or anything? Yeah, roll a perception check. You see Tamron right behind you. Didn't realize she was there, but she came in right behind you. I go, oh goodness. Now I know how rot feels. Yes. Um, I got a 15. <laughs> uh, so as you're looking around, all you uh, really notice is kind of like a really big shadow quickly pass above and it kind of broke the line of some of this light that's shining into the atrium. Okay. But um, it's up, up. There's danger, get out, no, stop. <laughs> I kind of like motion everyone else that's waiting at the door to come out. Um, I'm going to be looking around for anything arcane looking or any Same. Yeah, um, what those statues might be. So um, if you investigate any, well, you're looking at these statues and these statues have just intricate detail. Um, why don't you roll me an investigation check? Me too. If you'd like, you can give her advantage. Well, I was um, wondering if I could actually roll for history with advantage with my emblem. Uh, so... You, you wouldn't be able to, your emblem doesn't give you like uh, advantages as history, but you, okay. your, your emblem will be able to tell you if what you're looking at is an artifact and it kind of gives you the, um, what type of magic that artifact kind of gives off, like uh, a vocation, teleport, you know, that type of magic and at what range. So like okay. how strong it is. So, so if you wanted I... to try to inspect one of the statues as an artifact, you can do that. Okay. So what I'll do is I will do what you had said before about helping her to roll with advantage to see if there's anything arcane and if i do find something arcane i want to basically scan it after. okay so uh we'll roll tamarind well, first. I, I already rolled a 25 but let's see if i crit <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so um tamarin you get the sense that there's no, there's no like magic still like giving off of it or anything because it's just now a piece of sapphire. It's an enormous piece of sapphire that has the shape of this bugbear. And it gives you this sense that it was a bugbear warrior and it somehow got turned into this sapphire statue mid-action. Um, but there's no residual magic on it. It doesn't look like it was anything else. I, I say quietly but loud enough for everybody here hey everybody it seems like there's something around here that turns people into crystal statues so like be careful okay hmm. you've made that crystal clear as soon as Maroki says that you just hear a loud <laughs> I'm really bad at those types of noises but uh, if you all look up you'll see a large sapphire dragon kind of peering over the stairs down and it catches you all in its sights and you just see it jump up down with its wings tucked behind it coming straight down towards you into the middle of this atrium. I didn't get my chamomile ready. <laughs> Hello, dragon, sir. Hi, there's a dragon. Uh, stop! Come back. <laughs> and it's and it's ten stories above. You're still coming down. Can can we like react and do things? Yeah. What do you want uh, to do? I would like to go under the stairs to take cover. Go for it. 
Okay. That, that's and I'll guess I'll dodge technically, but okay. Anybody else? I'm still outside the door, so I'm just gonna. You're just gonna close the it. door, just like, oh no. No, stop. <laughs> this <is> no. <laughs> uh, Jen Tamron, what do you two do? Oh, that Hold door on. closes. I'm gonna rush for the door. <laughs> I'm gonna use my claws to open the door and go out the door. Did the, I? <laughs> the door that the rod just closed? Yeah, I'm opening it back up and leaving out of it. <laughs> okay. Um, All right, I guess so. Cameron, on the other oh, hand, yeah. is going to cast a uh, fire shield on herself and stand not in the middle of the room, but like just inside the door. Um, and the entire time the dragon's coming down, I'm good. I'm just going to try to talk to it. Perfect. <laughs> because it falls down and lands on its two front paws. And right before it lands, its wings open up to soften its fall. And it lands right in front of you, almost like a cat for this ginormous dragon. You almost, you, you feel the impact of it hitting the, the floor, but it's not ex at, at all what you expected. And it looks at you and she goes, well, hello. And who might you be? Tamron is currently standing there with her uh, 1920 suit on, jacket back on, but not buttoned, uh, wreathed in flames, um, shedding bright light. And says, hi, I'm Cameron. So, um, I understand that there's a princess in residence here, and she might need to go elsewhere. But, you know, only if she wants to. She goes, she, she moves a little bit, and her tail kind of, like, starts trying to wrap, like, behind you, almost to, like, try to push you close. And she's like, the only princess I see is right in front of me. <laughs> Oh, right. well, you know, that, that happens sometimes. I've been mistaken for a princess before, but I assure you I'm not. I'm just your simple wizard. Can I can I instinctively just kind of, like, start to approach as I see that the dragons start to do these weird, like, almost encompass Tamron and just go st stand next to Tamron? And... <laughs> yeah, you can. Except uh, one of the wings moves up and blocks your way, and she goes, "Excuse me, Excuse we're you. speaking right now. You have friends here, I see. How can I help you today?" I, I kind of wave off, Maroki. It's okay, Maroki. I'll handle this. So, uh, friend, what, what's your name? I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Well, my name is Sapphire. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sapphire. Um, I, 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 I was told there's a princess here with red hair, and and she was wearing a white dress, and no, she was sitting in a window. There's not. Mm. And if I, if there were, that princess would belong to me. Well. They really own a person. I mean, really. That's kind of ridiculous. Well, uh, I kind of have my ways. You know, I don't like that at all. Genevieve, Rot, Maroki, are you all doing anything else right now? while this uh, dragon's attention is on Tamron. I'm just visibly trying to restrain myself. I'd like to uh, sneak up the the uh, the staircase. Same. I don't know Tamron that well. I, I got to get this princess. <laughs> I got to get this princess to get to the, get the people back to get the Let's get some back. stealth rolls then. Yep. Stealth. Stealth. 18 plus 11. Uh-oh. 29. Uh-oh, I hope I'm not losing internet. Uh -oh. Okay. 
I need uh, uh, bu 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 I need those uh, stealth rolls again. Uh, I need to just hear them. Oh, I had 18 plus 11, so 29, I think. Okay, Genevieve? I have 19 plus 4. And 20. Okay, so total, Stacy, what was it again? Uh, 29, I think. Okay, Genevieve was 24. Yes. Okay, so uh, Genevieve, yours wasn't uh, strong enough. Um, Ra, you were able to to go ahead. You were able to to like sneak past as uh, Tamron's distracting this dragon, and then you just hear, "Where do you think you're going?" And the uh, you see uh, the you see Sapphire the dragon open up her mouth and she blasts this white blue light at you. Uh, make a Constitution saving throw. Me or or. Uh... Just me. Genevieve. Me. Oh no. Oh no. F's in chat. F's in chat. Wait, you have a. Don't you have a crit? I actually have a reaction. <laughs> um, This is fire, right? No. It's not? It's not elemental at all? No. Oh no. <laughs> Let's get them F's in chat going, please. <laughs> um, You know what? I. I don't want to, um, oh, actually, I need to save that for something else, so I'm not going to use my, my crit. I'm going to just roll. Roll! 10 plus oh, 1, 11. So. Oh, 11. <laughs> so yep. describe to me how you were uh, trying to sneak around this dragon right now. Well, I was trying to, like, crawl like have you ever seen a bird like trying to crawl on its belly yeah with your really long secretary bird legs yeah it's like so it's so, a wonder it's a wonder why you got caught <laughs> so trying to try to crawl try, fail to crawl you hear this loud sonic boom type of uh of noise emanate from sapphire's mouth and this blue white light shoots at you and it catches your left wing and it solidifies into sapphire. Oh no! And now um, you'll have to uh, make any dexterity saving throws at disadvantage, and you can no longer fly. Wait, you were a Kenku anyway. So I can't know. fly because that's why I was going to ask you about, you know, the tower and then flying. But then I was like, oh yeah, Kiku, I can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> Your friends aren't very nice, but I still like you. Oh well, you know, I'm I I kind of like you too, except for the fact that you keep people without without their uh, people, their consent. You know, no, that that's not okay. That's not. What about like? Why don't I treasures? show you? Why don't I show you? Maybe show you a little of what I've got to offer. And she goes, um, people want to stay here because I offer them. Hmm, something very desirable to many. And she goes, and she kind of turns around and um, she like sits on her back legs and uh, straight up on her front legs and uh, opens up her wingspan a little bit, kind of giving you the impression that she wants you to kind of climb on her back. I'll, uh, I'll climb on her back and like as soon as like I'm behind her head, just like... <laughs> And as soon as uh, you climb up and she's got kind of like uh, spikes on her spine. So you're able to grab onto one of them for, um, you know, for stability and her wings just flap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then she just shoots up straight and you just see this stairway of 20, 30 stories of stairways of just different animals and um and more specifically, different races of warriors turn to Sapphire as you're going up. Now, the farther you go up, the less and less of them that you see until finally you get towards the top. And, um, and, um, and there's almost no warriors up here. And she effortlessly lands up to the, to the top, almost like this big loft. And she, she uh, kind of like comes off over the banister, and then she goes... You see, many people even seek me out. I promise them that maybe if they stay long enough, 
Sorry, there's a motorcycle outside. And that's not canon. There's no motorcycles here. Um, okay, bye. Must, must be a really cool guy. Um, but anyways, um, <laughs> she goes, shoot, where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she goes, there's one thing that many, many people seek, and that's true love. And if you stay here long enough, you will find your true love. And you, my dear, and she kind of uh, moves some of your hair oh, behind your ear with her tail delicately, this big, enormous tail, just you, oh, you will find true love. Really, that's great, but uh, I, I don't necessarily uh, need, need long commitments and, and anything like that right now, because, you know, I've, I've been taking a lot of a lot of unexpected journeys. So, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, leave someone behind. Um, I can't, I just, you know, love's great and all, but it's not for everybody. Let's uh, switch scenes to Rot, Genevieve, and Maroki. You just saw Tamron fly off on the Sapphire Dragon straight up through this atrium. Well, I'm up the stairs. I went up the stairs. I'm going up there too. Yeah, so I mean, you wouldn't have made it faster than a dragon. So uh, I just want to see what the rest of them are doing. Is everybody else going up the stairs? Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be going up the stairs unless I found a mystical machine that takes you from one floor to the other. I don't know. Yeah, you're telling. No, I'm anything. just kidding. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you all make it. Uh, you all make it up, and uh, by this time, Tamron and um, and Sapphire are are walking down the hall. It's a big hall um, because uh, this this up at the top, there's the the ceilings are a lot higher, and this Sapphire Dragon's walking pretty effortlessly. Her wings are tucked behind her, but she can stretch them a little bit. She's got plenty of space, and you just see a little dot right next to her walking next to her and you can just see Sapphire's head kind of looking down in conversation with Tamron. And in front of you, you just see this hallway of doors on each side. Princess must be in one of these somewhere. Don't you think? Can I take a minute to try and get out of it? While we were going up the stairs, I have made um, decks rolls to get out of this sapphire trap. No, your your wing is permanently sapphire now. But okay. So um there's mm -hmm. like two doors. Right? Yeah. So uh you could probably see from between you and where Tamron and Sapphire are, there's probably about six doors three on each side all of them across the hall from each other and uh up by timoon in sapphire uh what's up there wait where again can I, can I see uh where timoon in sapphire are there's there's more doors behind them but between them and you there's the the three on each side okay. they're still walking so they'll probably end up um uh they'll probably end up you know passing more doors all right uh can i do an eye for detail you can use a bonus action to make a perception check to spot a hidden creature or object or make an invest in investigation check to uncover or decipher clues of uh, yeah yeah. yeah yeah go for it all right Okay, so I guess um, investigation would be the best. No. Yeah, investigation is just fine. Perception. I want to do perception, I think. No. Oh, well. There well, that's a wolf wood tray, everyone. I can hear it. <laughs> uh. That was a 10. Uh, you said you get it with advantage, right? Uh, where'd it go? 
so. Uh, no, it's a bonus action, not a advantage. So, uh, I don't have. Or well, I can use a perception, and I'm a uh, proficient, and it's a plus nine. So. Oh, ten plus nine. Okay, yeah. With that nineteen, yeah, you were able to see that the door, uh, the second door on the right, looks like it's been used more. All right, can I sneak and crack it open and see what's inside? Uh, it's locked. It's locked. Uh, can I use my thieves tool to check it? Sure. Okay, how do I do that? Just roll a flat d20 for me. That's a 16. 16, yeah. So um, with a 16, you're able to pick it, but uh, you as a professional rogue with your uh, thieves tools are not completely happy with um, the amount of noise that you end up making. So you just make a little bit of jingle and you, even to you, you're just like, oh. um, and then uh, behind the door, you kind of hear like some muffled like shuffling but you open the door and you creak it open and you see that beautiful room that that mirror showed you. And in the bed, you see the redheaded princess laying with her hands just on her chest like this, asleep. She's asleep. Uh, can I go over to her? And I'm yeah. gonna uh, climb it, cause I'm a little small, I'm gonna climb up on the bed. Then, Normally that would wake somebody up, but it looks like the princess is just either sleeping really, uh, or she seems like she's sleeping pretty heavily. I'm going to take out my uh, thieves chipstick, put it on me, and then grab her by the shoulders and shake her. <laughs> <laughs> As your hands were going closer to the, to the princess to like grab her shoulders, you could tell that her lips were starting to purse like... And then you grab her, she goes, hey, 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 you know you're supposed to kiss a sleeping princess. I, I, Maroki, can Maroki come up to the room and just at the right moment just see shaking of this princess? That's all yes. I see. Yes, yes. I just come around and go, Rot, what are you doing here? She's shaking me. I oh. haven't been paying attention. I've just been pecking at my wing to try and make it not crystal. <laughs> Every time you peck at it, a piece of sapphire falls off, like a sapphire feather falls off. Oh no. <laughs> hey, you, we gotta get out of here. Sorry, oh. I didn't kiss you on my face. No, Let's go. I'm not leaving with you. Oh, you're not leaving with me, why? Why is he? Um, first of all, you don't look like my true love. A gold can't be your true love. What? Well, my true love wouldn't shake me awake. Would your true love do this? And I smack her on the face. Uh, no, get out of here. I'm yeah, going to call if you Sapphire. Want to try I will no, have no, no, Sapphire no, 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 no. come in here right no, no, now no, no, and no, get no, rid no, no. of you. No, You've no. done it now. All right, all right. Calm down. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Can I, can I walk in in a second? We do. Oh, I, thought you, your, I thought you were already in. Your true yeah. love is uh, at the magical kingdom, and they came and asked Kingdom? Us. Did you say kingdom? I did say kingdom. Is it a king? Yes, a it prince, is. maybe? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, uh, why isn't a, he here? A, a he's very, supposed to come get me. I'm sorry. He's too tall, so you can't go through the door, you know? It's 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 oh, a whole thing. It's a... Uh, Big Osha. Thing. It's yeah. Osha. It, uh, this this uh, Four Seasons is not compliant with OSHA. I don't know if you're you're real uh, keen on. No, the, I don't know policies. what that means. It's a whole thing. You mm. don't even know. So mm. uh, he can't fit in the door. So he asked me, a, a small statured goblin, and a couple of my companions who are also small statured, maybe not so much thin, but you know, um, <clears throat> to come get you. So he could show you his magical kingdom. Is that a euphemism for something? Because if it is, I'm into it. Let's go. <laughs> I would, you know what? I have to tell Sapphire. She's going to be no, so upset if you I'm know, gone. I, Sapphire! I, I, no, actually, Sapphire! No, no, no. I'm leaving! 
What? They are What's busy wrong? with Where's someone Sapphire? else. All right. Okay. Oh, she found another princess. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. So we find we, their true love too. I, yes, I'm they sure are. Of it. So yeah. why? Oh, you I'm mean? sure of it. No, let, you're, oh, you're still favor. talking. Let's go. I know. We're trying. I'm trying. Don't make me take this wing and smack you. This will hurt oh, harder than Rot. Okay. Use me. I'm a princess. All right. Yeah. Do you, you don't do talk you, to me like that. Do you want to go to a Stradle Books? Because uh, I I know a place called a Stradle Books that makes some really good all right. drinks all right. in the. Uh, Everyone. Do they have the, the, the cold bean juice? Look, you yeah. know what? I have something. You I have look something like better. a person that likes that. What? 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 What's, I have something what's... better than bean juice, madam. Look, I have brought the most beautiful pink rooibos tea that is what brought from the Everglades, oh, and something that's disgusting. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, but Sapphire it's has time to go. Bean juice, and the more sugar, the better. <laughs> I use, I use, um, oh. Dimension Door. Okay, what does Dimension Door for, do for us? It, it takes us 500 feet from here to wherever I have been within 500 feet. Okay. It's time to go. <laughs> it is time to go. Goodbye, Sapphire. It was yeah. a pleasure. I, I, uh, uh, Thank you so much. Oh, uh, what's your name? What's your name? Tamron. No, your, your name's Tamron? No, Tamron and Sapphire. <laughs> We're on your scene now. <laughs> so, anyways, Tamron, you can have Anywho. your pick of, of any of these penthouses. You'll have anything you'd like to eat because I can get it for you. Nobody would bother you. And the view is so beautiful. And she opens up one of the doors so you can see one of the penthouse suites and the windows um is uh is overlooking into the ocean you see it's the full princess package and there's a couple other princesses here as a matter of fact agatha might even tell you how great she likes it here so let's go back let me show you come on and then you just hear goodbye sapphire and then sapphire goes what and then she goes where did your friends go? And then she spreads oh, down the hall. Someone must have found her true love. Look at that. <laughs> she goes, and she just starts sprinting back down the uh, the hallway. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch a ride on her tail. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so you just uh, <laughs> anybody who uh, may be able to envision this, there's this giant sapphire dragon sprinting down the hall and just flapping in the back of the tail as Tamron holding on to the back of it. Um, this is great. I don't think I want to live here forever, though. Uh, Genevieve, uh, Rot, and Maroki, you just hear. Dimension door. Dimension door. Dimension door. I was gonna. I was gonna say, are, who's taking this one? Kind of oh, well, look at this! The door's right here. This is perfect. And she and uh, Princess Agatha just walks right through. Sweet. Where okay. is it that she ends up? Like one hundred feet in front of the tower. Uh, I would say five hundred feet might get you down to the bottom of the stairs. Sweet. Maroki jumps it's... off the side of the uh, entire uh, staircase and gets into his shell. As okay. He falls. Okay. I know he, what you're doing. He presumably falls, but uh, I have slow fall as a monk, so I kind of just want to like spin gracefully down in my shell. Roll. What about you, Rob? I guess I'll just go through Jim's uh, dimension door. Dimension and... door is you and one other being oh okay so i it, was it just happens left. In instantaneously i was just left by myself a little goblin okay all right um so i guess i'll just walk out the door and and see a giant sapphire dragon charging straight at you and with uh, tamarin ever so often you'll see tamarin up <laughs> and down i i you have um tamarin i heard that she's gonna be a princess now I was just looking through because I wanted to be a princess too. That's bullshit! And you just see her open her mouth 
and she's getting ready to shoot you with her sapphire. Yeah, breath. the the entire time she's she's flailing around on the tail, she's like, "But you should really let people leave if they want to go. <laughs> it's their choice on where they want to live. This is why more people have come to stay with you. Ow, that would hurt." <laughs> All right, Tamarine, I'll see you later, and I'm gonna do a dash down the steps. Um, do you do you think uh, it'd be okay if I did something cool for you? Sure, go ahead. I'm gonna have you uh, grab a shield from one of the, a sapphire shield dropped by one of the warriors, jump on top of it, and uh, basically uh, skateboard down the railing. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as you jump up onto the railing and like slide down the stairs, uh, the stairs railings, Sapphire jumps up again, just like she did when she first saw you all and jump up and she goes, Agatha, where are you going? And she jumps straight down and she passes you rot as you're falling. And uh, Maroki, you hit the floor. Um, t uh, Genevieve and Agatha walk, uh, you know, dr walk out their their uh, dimension door into the kitchen, and the dragon just falls down. Boom! Uh, Tamron, uh, do me a strength check. <laughs> this is gonna be funny. You want to see this? This is gonna be hilarious. Oh, that was way better than I was expecting. Minus one fifteen. <laughs> yeah that's okay we'll let you uh, hold on to the tail so so actually you let go of the tail a little bit and as uh and you're like kind of floating up in the air as like you're falling down and then you land right back on top of the uh, onto the tail of the sapphire dragon and uh right behind you genevieve and agatha you hear another blast and behind you, the um, the uh, double doors that you walked into the kitchen, if you turn back, you'll see that they all got turned into sapphire. Rot and Tamron, you see like this this splash of sapphire hit the door and cut, like just completely turn into sapphire and pieces of little pieces of sapphire like shooting off of it. Um, and uh, and then you see her swipe at the door and just boom, smash it open. And then Agatha goes, it's okay, a Sapphire. They're taking me to my true love. Uh, Rot, you finally made it down to the bottom, and uh, you just see the butt of this dragon sticking out of the uh, the kitchen door, and uh, Sapphire or Tamron's on top of her. What do you do? All right, it's a Sapphire anus, isn't it? It's disgusting. I'm gonna keep running towards. Uh, the door, I guess. <laughs> the uh, the kitchen door, because th there's a giant dragon that just swiped and was like stuck in it, like a dog stuck in like something they shouldn't be getting into, and it's like trying to paw at uh, Genevieve and Agatha, and then uh, the back tail is like swinging, and Tamron's on top of the dragon. And the um, I can from behind, because I fell like down in the middle, right? So I'm in the atrium while this thing is swiping at the doors. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of try to like get Tamron's attention and Rot's attention, and kind of like motion them down, and I point to the front door. Because presumably. Yeah, I was door, gonna right? ask if the front door was in this room because oh, right. I would be going that way. Yeah, I'll follow. I can I can stealth as well. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's stuck. Um, oh. And. No, no, you won't oh. have to because this dragon's stuck in the door, so it can't see you. Um, but it is uh, flailing and thrashing, so let's see if you can dodge some of these uh, inadvertent dragon attacks. Um, so uh, everybody roll a dexterity saving. Okay. Be a 23 for Maroki. Yes, natural 20, so 23 for Tamron. Rot? Uh, eight. 20, eight? and I'm proficient on decks. Okay, so um, the three of you besides Genevieve were able to uh, dodge some attacks, but Genevieve, you weren't uh, uh, dodging any uh, tail attacks. As a matter of fact, um, the head of this dragon is like stuck and she's got her arms like trying to claw at you, but um, she can't move. But what you do see is you see 
these um, these big metal boxes. And just because we're all humans and we know what they are, they're stainless steel fridges, and they're lifting up with telekinetic power, and they're shooting. The, she's like flinging them with her tele uh, telekinetic fling powers. And uh, one of them's coming at you, and another one is going straight for uh, Agatha. Um, so your dexterity saving throw was a nine or an eight, so you failed. So that does. Sixteen damage. Okay. It hits you with bludgeoning damage. Um. And then uh, you see as one of the fridges hits you, the other one's going towards Agatha and she stops and she kind of turns off to the side to like say something. She goes, and one more thing. And like with that, she kind of like dodges out of the way and the thing hits it. Oh my goodness, what was that? Sapphire, it's okay, it'll be fine. Uh, Tamron, Maroki, and Rob. So wait, like, did, did it, did she dodge or did, it she dodged, it. yeah, like her oh, okay. inadvertent. <laughs> oh, she okay. got out of the way. Uh, Tamron, Maroki, and Rot, you're making your way to the front door. Yep, gonna gonna get through that front door. Um, so as you pass one of the other uh, doors to get towards the front door, you notice that the whole lobby is turned into sapphire, making it very difficult to walk. Um, but um, as you're slipping and trying, um, I need you all to make uh, dexterity saving throws to see how far you can make it to the front door. I'm going to use the advantage that I was given earlier. Perfect. You oh, said gosh. That's... Yeah. I rolled the same exact thing. 11. 17. Okay. But I'm proficient at Maroki? Uh, 18, sorry. 18? Okay, so uh, Rot and Maroki, you're able to kind of um, make sure-footed steps to come uh, to run across this uh, this this sapphire floor that's very slippery. Uh, Tamron, you stepped one step onto it and, like, fell flat. Um, so they're all in front of you, and um, and uh, that noise, would you make a noise when you when you hit the floor? Oh, that's freaking hurt. Great with the ladies, not with the sapphires. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, that's when um, you hear uh, sapphire from behind in the other room. Kind of, it sounds like this big commotion happened. And uh, Genevieve, you see that she pushed herself away from the the entrance, and she heard something over there. Um, so she shoots another blast of sapphire breath at you. But um, she kind of hits the ceiling, so you just see pieces of, of sapphire hit the ceiling or come off the ceiling as like a splash, and it kind of rains down on you, but it doesn't hurt. And she starts going after Tamron. She's like, "I'm not gonna lose two princesses today," and uh, she goes after you, Tamron. What is she? So she's just coming towards you. Um, in front of you, Rot, uh, Maroki, and all that, you will see more uh, shields and more warriors turn to sapphire. Like this whole room is sapphire. There's, there's furniture that's uh, mochi. Okay, baby. What happened to baby? You tried to get on the windowsill and then um, slipped and then fell on my cup of noodles and then slipped on that. Oh boy. Fresh. Um, look, look for no means no, Sapphire. No means no. And um, I'm I'm gonna try my best to run away. Actually, I'm gonna use Thunder Step again. Okay. Yeah, to get myself as far out the door as I can. Okay, go for it. Yep, that's it. Uh, okay, make a, uh, if, if, uh, Sapphire is within 10 feet, make a con save. Okay. That's a nine total. So, uh, take damage. Great. Yes. Uh, that is 3d10 thunder damage. Where's the other one? There you are. 
14 plus 6 is 20 thunder damage. 20? Okay. Yeah, yeah with that thunder damage, um, you saw a piece of Sapphire's like cheek shatter and come off. Um, and uh, you're able to make it out. Rot, Maroki, and Tamron, you all make it out of the uh, front door of this, uh, this tower. Genevieve and uh, Agatha, you were able also to walk out of the kitchen door as well. Um, and uh, and uh, you all are standing outside of this building. Um, and you just hear like this loud screaming, screeching of this, this, uh, this sapphire dragon outside. Or inside, I mean. But uh, it doesn't seem like she'll be able to leave all too well. Oh, that was sad, huh? We should probably get away as quickly as possible. I yes. agree, Timon. Jin, uh, are you okay? Uh, I see you got a little sapphire on you. Can I at least move my wing, or is it just completely handicapped? So your wing is turned into sapphire, but at the joint, you'll be able to move it. But I can't expand it. Uh, no, you wouldn't be able to expand it, no. Do you need a lift? I really don't need you to speak right now. <laughs> cool, Just right? Eden, I understand. So yeah, I'm in, I'm in distress, but I am alive, so that's all I can ask for. Um, I pretty much look to this princess, and I and I almost want to use some form of attack on her just because she's irritated me a little bit but i don't and so i just basically move I, it's basically like a, a animal licking its wounds but it can't lick the wounds because the wound won't heal so it's continuously acting even though i don't understand that it's hurting me or I, excuse me do you mind if i take a look at your wing I, I might be able to help, but I have to determine the nature of this. I make a sad squawk noise. Oh, okay. Um, I, which I, is, which is, which is, yes. <laughs> I, I get closer and uh, carefully look over the wing. Um, I, I'm essentially trying to determine if remove curse might help with this. Um... Or if it would need some sort of like... Restora restoration magic or what what might help yeah so um yeah since we don't have a lot of time let's just say that after you investigate this uh this wing you can tell that it's a good thing that she wasn't turned completely into sapphire that because it's still attached to organic uh, an organic being that some restoration magic will be able to get her wing back to normal but it would take some time and a lot of magic, which it seems Genevieve has access to with the, her uh, group of historians. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to get this wing back uh, after a little while, at least. Swag. Good. So Goodness, that was a lot of work for one princess. I guess so, you should probably oh, go back. Oops, that was me a third time. Okay, this is my final so. So... <laughs> You all are able to uh, travel um, back to um, to the magical kingdom, with um, Agatha insisting on spending the night um, in her own room. Thank you very much. Um, but you finally make it. It takes you a lot longer because you can't travel as much as you want because Agatha is a pain in the ass, um, and uh, you're finally able to. Uh, get to the magical kingdom and lord mike is overjoyed agatha not so much you straight lie to her uh, that is not a tall person but he is a lord so she's happy enough that she he's will be tall in attitude mm -hmm. <laughs> she's Holy tall in attitude, attitude for sure in any case uh he holds his end of the bargain and he allows the fiends to occupy the land and the homes around the magical kingdom. And, uh, and, and uh, you are able to finish your quest and now you're back at Dave's, um, but Dave's not around. Uh, this time you all four of you get your own, um, you get your own little, little private room and you're having your um, mounds and mounds of lettuce, Genevieve, um, and uh, appetizers. Does it, does it have snake too? 
can I have steak too? Snake? Uh, yes. A buster shows up and he goes, well, yeah, I can get you some snake, of course. And uh, gets you little deep fried pieces of uh, snake. Not deep fried, uh, they're uh, grilled because I just, they're the little uh, lemon grilled with rosemary or something. I don't know. Sounds well, kind of good, actually. I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> And I, even though we have separate rooms, I kind of share mine with um, Knox. Whenever we all get back. Me? I, yes. Oh, oh, I, I, I can you up on the after you? Rox. Rox. Sorry, not Dox. Rox. 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 Um, Rox. Sorry. Rox. <laughs> How long are... have we been traveling together and you've been calling me Rox this whole time? I've been distressed. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, <laughs> get off the hook. <laughs> I was just going to say that um, as we kind of like um, gather around the the tavern as we finally come in and we take our time, um, Roki is just going to take out a very special pouch from his uh, from his shell. It's weed. Going to stew some red hibiscus tea. For it's everyone. weed. And <laughs> and he steeps it and makes a whole pot for the table. I can say, we did well today, though our victory may have been bitter for the princess. I believe that we have done well for the people of the Magic Kingdom. And Miami. Magical Kingdom. There was a mistake. Magical Kingdom. By yes. Maroki. It's okay, though. Magical Wait. Kingdom. Um, uh, by the Maroki way, Luke, Moose. Hold on. Uh, Maroki, or Luke, we can't hear you that well. I think your mic got farther away or something. Oh, it's great. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Rock. Go ahead. I, mean, I was just um, asking about my uh, friend Morky Moose. Uh, sometimes hangs around with a duck. No. They're not around. They're not around. Duck. Not, no. not down. Uh, not at uh, this. Not fine at the magical. Oh, okay. okay. You're not at the magical kingdom. You're back at the oh, uh, yeah. at one of the bar and grills in the right. the Everglades. They know how to. Sorry, party. we're rushing I'm because sorry. we're almost out of time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Genevieve, now you've uh, now that you've come completed your quest um, uh, before you go and see uh, the four of you go and see uh, Eddie and Mr. Meyer um, at their place to let them know the good news you have time to investigate that black slate that you were given so I think Tamarine was holding it right no, I gave it over basically as soon as he left the room because yeah, that was right. silly. You know, yeah, I, the I, only I, difference between you and me is he met me about five minutes earlier. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have it. It's it's on, in my possession. It's in my poncho, which is where I have my bag of holding, which has everything. So <laughs> have you identified what that thing is now that it's rightfully ours? Well... I won't be able to do that until uh, my wing gets fixed, because okay? I can't get back into disguise until my wing is fixed. And once my wing is fixed and I can disguise myself, I can take it to the guild, and they'll be able to ascertain. Uh, my my emblem my my emblem can only do so much when it comes to objects of this matter. So this is a good day for the guild and for us for the coin we are bound to have in our pocket. All right. I, I can identify that for you. I took my head. What? I, I, I Go have that. I... I pull out a uh, piece of uh, chalk that seems to kind of change color and I kind of smash it onto the end of my wand and start drawing on the ground around me uh, arcane sigils as I make in uh, the identify, identify ritual circle. And then I say, okay, can I have that please? I push the button on my poncho with like my beak and then I hand it over with my um, talon and okay. I watch very carefully. I basically, if you allow it DM, I'm basically recording this. Prosperity. Um, with your your little uh, sigil or your emblem doesn't record anything. It oh, kind no. of oh. No, I'm saying <laughs> oh no. Um, um, and I'll just remember really really hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tamara, what do you do? 
and then as as I kind of receive the information over the tablet thing, I'm like, oh, this is what it does. And I cast sucking grasp on it. The electricity hi, from hi, your hi. hands shocks into this this black slate and it almost absorbs it down into the bottom. And you see this <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this lightning almost flicker. And you see on this black slate, you see this picture into the, into the past, into the ancients. And what you see is a lot of humans half naked on a beach, jumping into the water and hanging out. What the hell are they doing? And then, um, and they're all kind of just hanging out and you see, it looks like somebody's holding this piece of slate. And it's recording everything and um they're having fun and people are are throwing balls over nets and and uh some of them are, seem to just be heads laying on the beach and then all of a sudden the light of the whole sky turns black everything goes pitch black and everybody goes quiet and um and then it flickers and then you see a bright light and then it goes black again and it happens a couple of times but every time the light comes back Every human, every person on this beach seems dimmer and dimmer until finally they all disappear and the and this whatever this slate is or whatever this where you were looking at falls into the sand, crooked. And it just for the rest of for as long as you're watching it is just this still picture into the sand. And that folks is where we will end today. Congratulations, y'all solved my sapphire dragon puzzle.